Welcome to the finals of the 2009 College World Series. LSU and Texas, legendary programs playing for the national title. For 59 years, the elite in college baseball have met in the middle heartland. Now only two championship series remain at Rosenblatt, a piece of history sitting high on a hill in Omaha. These are the times to savor and reflect. This place, this place is just inspiring. Rich with history and tradition. A shrine, the shining light and ultimate destination for so many and so few. You see, Omaha is not just another stopover, not just another spot on the map. It's a link to our past and a clear path ahead. As time ticks away on this magnificent little place, it's not a time for sadness, but a time for reflection. Because no matter at what location or on what hill, it's Omaha that makes the College World Series special. It's the finish line for decades of preparation LSU's return to glory is almost complete. The end to Paul Maneri's quest is within his grasp. The Tigers' focus is fixed on the national title, and their legions will settle for nothing less. But this is Omaha. And as Augie Garrido knows, fate can change in a moment. Here now, gone just seconds later. Gone! And Texas wins! Welcome to Omaha, Nebraska, the home and haven of the College World Series. It's game one of the championship series, live from Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium. Capital One presents ESPN's coverage of the College World Series. The matchup many wanted to see, traditional powers, and two of the best in college baseball this year for the national championship. Earlier, LSU coach Paul Maneri spoke to his Tigers. This is what this is what we come here for. This is the fun part, and that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to have fun today, All right, Lewis? We're going to ride Lewis's back. We're going to go out and play hard behind him. When you guys play to your ability, nobody in the country can beat you. So let's just go out and have some fun and enjoy this experience and let it rip out there. Okay? Does everybody understand that? All right, feeling good? Yes, Let's go get them. Come on, boys. We will have a packed house here in Omaha, 25,000 sweltering in the heat for tonight's opening game of the College World Series Finals. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Oral Hershiser, Robin Ventura. It's great to have you with us. LSU comes into this game 3-0, and and it's been an easy 3-0. Oral, they've dominated everybody they've played. Yeah, they have, and they're a very balanced team, but it starts with their power. It's been absolutely outstanding. I don't think we will have an outage here at all. Nine home runs, seven different guys, 675 slugging percentage, only second to their own university back in 1998. And then with power might come bulk, but this team has athleticism. They're making sparkling plays all over the field. No errors, no unearned runs in this College World Series. And then on the mound, Lewis Coleman, SEC Pitcher of the Year, a disappointing junior year finish, wanted to come back his senior year, and he's on the mound looking for that opportunity to get a W in these College World Series finals. Well, it has been a different story for Texas. Yes, they're 3-0, and but Robin, it's been a different kind of 3-0. They've had to scrap for all of them. Oh, they have. They have the number one ranked ERA staff in the country. Yet, yeah, they've been finding ways to win late in the game. They've been building confidence. They're more of a bunt and run team, but they've been very explosive late in games. Not only have they had two walk-off wins at the World Series, they also won a 25-inning game in the regionals and had a walk-off grand slam in the regionals. So they find a way to win at the end of the game. They could be dangerous. So many comes comebacks, but none more dramatic than Friday night's 4-3 thriller. And Aaron Andrews has more on that. Mike, it just almost doesn't seem fair. While LSU has just breezed through their bracket, 
Texas has won three straight in dramatic fashion. The first game, a walk-off walk versus Southern Miss. The second game, they overcame a six-run deficit to beat Arizona State on Tuesday night. And as you mentioned, they saved the most dramatic for last. Baseball is a game of unlimited possibilities. Arizona State, three outs away now from extending their season to tomorrow. You know, I was frustrated, of course, but Mikey came and told me after I got the ball that they were going to score and pick me up. Way back, it is gone! I knew it when I hit it. I mean, the feeling was unbelievable. Right when I stepped in, it kind of went to a different mode. Like, I couldn't hear anything in my head. Connor Rowe drives one to left. Back at the wall, it is gone! And Texas wins! The next thing I remember was looking in the stands when we were walking off. So that was the biggest baseball moment of my life. A local Austin paper kind of dubbed this team the Heart Attack Horns. Their head coach, Augie Garrido, has said their team motto, find a way. Every game has demanded something different of this team, and it's brought out such a competitive spirit that he has just loved all year long. And guys, one more note, such a pro LSU crowd here right now at Rosenblatt. Texas reliever uh, Austin Wood walked off the field just a few moments ago and said to me, well, looks like we're the underdog today. Certainly seems like it right now, Mike. All right, thank you, Aaron. Kyle Peterson joins us after the break, and it's time for the first pitch. LSU and Texas, the championship finals begin in Omaha. It's the CWS Finals, live from the Johnny. Welcome back to the College World Series LSU in Texas just moments away. First let's check in with Kyle Peterson. Kyle. Thank you Mike. You know most kids grow up wanting to play baseball in the major leagues but for Paul Maneri it was a little different. He grew up wanting to be a college baseball coach. His father Demi was a head coach for 30 years at Miami Dade. Paul grew up idolizing names like Ron Frazier, Rod Dato and Bobby Winkles. A college or a coaching career that began over 30 years ago at his alma mater Columbus High School in Miami brought him here to LSU three years ago with a goal or bringing a national title back to Baton Rouge. You know, when you put on this jersey, you pull this Tigers jersey on over your head, it represents greatness in college baseball. And it's an awesome responsibility to be the custodian of this program. What Skip Bertman built here uh, during the 80s and 90s and, you know, was, was really the model program in the country. And my job was to kind of restore the, the glory to the program. And Mikey's began to do just that to LSU three years ago in 06 29 wins. Excuse me, in 07 29 wins. Last year, the National Coach of the Year brought LSU here to the College World Series and now just two wins away from his first national title as a head coach. Kyle, it's the only blank on his resume and he hopes to fill it in in the next couple of days. Let's take a look at the Capital One lineup for LSU. And if you follow this, a familiar one as well. LeMayhew, Schimpf, Dean, Gibbs, Matuk, Mitchell, Ochenko, Helenihi, and the great shortstop, Austin Nola, Schimpf, big College World Series at the plate. Yeah, very good athlete. Plays outfield, playing left field today, but almost was part of a lineup switch where he would have played infield, so he can play both ways. But the bat is good, and he's gotten extra strong and more mature. Chance Ruffin, the ace of the staff, 118 and a third innings, a 10 and 2 record. Got roughed up in that first start, though, Robin. He did. And, you know, once you, you're the Friday night starter and you get roughed up a little bit, you have a chance for redemption. And, you know, luckily, Augie Garrido gave it to him. Oh! We're underway in Omaha. The heat index, 107 degrees. Yikes. LeMahieu six hits and ten trips here in the College World Series but a bouncer down to Torres at third and he throws him out. This is truly the first sweltering day we have had for the College World Series 93 degrees feels much hotter not much of a threat of rain tonight. So we expect wonderful weather for Game one, game two, and game three if it's necessary on Wednesday. Here's Schimpf. 
You know, Mike, the weather for me is really feels like a St. Louis Day game. Back when the, you know, the artificial turf spikes would actually melt the bottom. This ball hit high and deep to right, and this baby is out of here. Three home runs of the series for Ryan Schimpf. Well, we were talking about the power. This ball is elevated, and Ryan Shrimp, Shrimp is not going to wait around. Shrimp is going to be all over this. These guys hit for power, and that ball, you got to get that ball down if you're going to have a chance against this offense. That is the 17th home run that Ruffin has given up this year. And they're not laying back. They swung at the second fastball they saw from Ruffin, and then another high fastball got him. And the wind blowing out to left got no help. And it still creamed about 20 rows back in the stands. And oh. LSU has jumped on top of everybody here in the series. They have scored in the first inning every ball game. And then they've kept on scoring. Average better than nine runs a game. Well, if you see the way the shadows are, any breaking ball is going to be very tough to pick up. I mean, if I'm a hitter, I'm going in early in the game thinking the only thing I'm looking for is a fastball. Especially a fastball up. Oh. Because that's the one that doesn't change location from where you saw it to what it changes into the dark. It's the low fastball with movement that can still give you a little trouble, I'm sure, Robin. Blake Dean has two home runs out here in Omaha. Well, that's the one right there. You, you know, they throw a lot of sliders, a lot of changeups, but that changeup to these left handed hitters with the open stance, you're going to have to be able to place that on the outer half. The three, four, five hitters have been on fire out here. Dean gone on this one, the second out of the inning. Well, the home and run the first the strike out for Ruffin. Was a fastball, of course, and it was up. And you can see from the lights of the dark, watch how this does not change planes at all. There's not a lot of movement. So that ball is at the same place when the hitter sees it in the light as it is in the shade. And that's the easiest pitch to hit. When I used to pitch in these conditions, I'd ask my hitters, what are you seeing? What are you picking up? And that would always help you with pitch selection and pitch location. Start. Schimpf after that home run is hitting 500 in the NCAA tournament 16 hits five homers and 12 driven in somebody's got to get hot at the right time if you expect a win and he is on fire. Here's that Texas defense they have been exceptional all year long seventh in the country Torres Lloyd Tucker and belt around the infield and Rupp behind the plate who was one of the hitting stars the other night. No defense against a 415-foot uh, blast, though, is there? It's tough to catch that one. Micah Gibbs hitting 292 on the season, but 375 here. Boy, the LSU fans are some kind of into it. If you think they don't expect to come out of the dugout firing on all cylinders, they have outscored their opponents 27 to 3 in the first oh, inning. The chance Ruffin is in an emotional battle right now, coming off the rough outing here in his first outing in the College World Series, and now giving up that home run. He's got to find a way to gather himself and find some confidence in all of his pitches, not just the fastball. Three and two fouled off by Gibbs. He's only a sophomore out of Pflugerville, Texas. Switch hitter. Well, I think one of the things with Ruffin, you come into a game, sometimes pitchers ease themselves into games. I think that just shocks you enough that now you go into the fighting mode. Strike three on the corner. Backdoor breaking ball. Two strikeouts in the inning, but one home run. And it was a bomb from Ryan Schimpf, who has been the hitting star of the playoffs for LSU. LSU already breaking on top, 1 0 as Texas comes to bat in the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for the Longhorns. 
And we start at third base with a leadoff hitter, Michael Torres. Then it's Tucker, Belt, Moldenauer, the DH tonight. Rupp, Keys, Loy, Clark, and Rowe. Well, Cameron Rupp's been behind the plate for these guys. Big emotional leader, but also three home runs out of his four hits here at the College World Series. Big ones for these guys. And there's Lewis Coleman. 14 and 2. What a record. SEC Pitcher of the Year decided to come back for his senior year out of high school. He was drafted in the 28th round by Atlanta, then junior year 14th round by Washington, and now this year fifth round by the Kansas City Royals. One of the reasons he came back was to make this return trip and Schimpf getting his honors. Well, there's purple and gold everywhere in this crowd. It's a little pro LSU, I think. Well, they I, always I, bring yeah. so many people. Up. It's been the most amazing. Even you know when it started in the 80s with Skip Bertman bringing this team here, they, I mean, they used to camp out with their motorhomes out in yeah. left field, and it's it's just grown since then. No shortage of food with them either. <laughs> Did you taste a little bit? Oh yeah. Uh huh. If you like gumbo? spicy? They got it. Well, they're they're saying was you know we brought the gumbo and we left rice at home. <laughs> Michael Torres to lead it off. And Torres with a deep fly to center field but room. Matuk out there makes the catch for the first out. This defense only 18th overall for the year but perfect here. Shim Matuk Mitchell with blinding speed and right. Helenihi Nola LeMayu and Ochinko they have been just as perfect as the outfield and Micah Gibbs one of the best catchers in the country behind the dish. Travis Tucker stands in he's had a good World Series six for twelve. Oh. It's a guy who will take one for the team. Leads the club and hit by pitch and number two all time career. He's been plunked 40 times. We had a problem with getting plunked too much last college World Series. The kids were wearing the armor on their hand. We had a tremendous amount of hit by pitches. We actually had somebody called back here at this call. Yeah. College World Series after being hit. The NCAA breaking you know coming down on that as far as certain teams wanted to lean in there and get hit by the inside fastball or a hanging breaking ball. Tucker has that elbow protected. Oh! Called strike on the inside corner two and two. Well you won't see Texas be as much of a free swinging team as LSU. They're going to be patient maybe bunt some guys over bunt for hits so it's a little different kind of offense. Breaking ball tap toward third. Helen Ahe, nice play on the run throws him out. Texas has got a scratch while LSU just pours on the coal. Here's the difference. Texas with only two hitters better than 300 for the season. LSU nearly the entire lineup. The team batting average. It's a huge disparity in home runs more than double. So you know Texas is playing small ball. They got to work for every run they can get. And when they fall behind it just puts that much more pressure on. Them. Yeah they really grind out at bats. They're, they're not as much free swingers and you know part of it is just having tough at bat after oh. tough at bat. And then that eventually leads to a chance for you to put some runs on both some crooked numbers which they've been doing late in games. Brandon Belt stands in a fifth round draft choice of the San Francisco Giants. Oh. Really close stance up on that front toe. It has some power. The numbers not really reflective because of the big ballpark they play at in at home. This will be a rarity right here. Mr. Coleman has 22 and two thirds innings in the College World Series. Only three walks. Only 20 hits. Also, he comes right after you. Ah! Right down the pipe for a called strike. You think somebody with that kind of command is not going to strike out a lot of people. He almost has a strikeout an inning 21 K's coming into this game. Those 22 and two thirds. Foul back. 
That's the whole thing, Robin, between a guy that doesn't walk anybody, but you want to grind out at bat so you could find yourself hitting an 0-1 counts, 0-2, 1-2 counts all night. So do you jump on the first pitch? Well, that's the thing you really have to decide. If you're going to grind out a bat, you, you have to be patient and be willing to go to two strikes. If not, you better find something early and, and get a good hack at it. Low fastball, golf to shallow right. Mitchell comes on. Two out, or a check it. That's three out. Three up, three down as Brandon Belt flies to right. We played one at the College World Series. Opening game of the best of three. LSU won nothing over Texas. One nothing LSU as we go to the top of the second inning. Aaron a little toasty down there on the field, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm very jealous of you three sitting up there. You mentioned with the heat index, little over 100 degrees, feeling good out here, guys. Texas pitcher Chance Ruffin, when he came back to the dugout, was complaining that the ball was actually slipping out of his hand because of the humidity. He's been using that rosin bag on the mound, but he also, when he came out, trainer was putting liquid rosin on him as well. And Bulldog, question for you. I mean, how do you handle the heat? Obviously, the Texas players used to these type of conditions, you know, pitching in Austin. One of the few things that I would do other than the rosin is to chew a sugar bubble gum. It's one of the things that is more sticky. It makes your saliva then sticky. And so the sugar list, you don't want to put the sugar in your system because you don't want the up and down as far as your sugar highs and lows as you're pitching. You don't want that energy low, but that was one of the few times that I would chew sugar bowl, you know, sugar bubble gum. This one's fouled back by Matuk. I'm not so sure Say that's fair. Well, you're That's allowed. Legal. You're allowed fair to lick legal? your fingers you off. You've got to wipe it off, and you got to rub it up, and it, it makes it stickier continuously compared with the rosin. I never noticed it. The rosin with, with dries off. No. <laughs> There's also certain hair gels that'll be sticky at times. Swing and a miss. Matuk is what about gone. Blue? blue? No, you can't use blue. You okay. know, you have to admire somebody who never missed a trick, and that's him. Well, there are. There are hair gels that when they're they go like this, and when you get them dry, they're a little on the sticky side, and it helps. So your I'll hair looks you. good I'll during the game and maybe you get a little better grip that a little better grip but it's not a foreign <laughs> sus <laughs> substance because you only little, get the stuff uh, that's made in America <laughs> it's not a foreign substance then oh jeez come <laughs> on boy talk are about you? the letter of the law we are <laughs> in a very gray area <laughs> I think you very missed the gray. intent oh I don't know. Jared Mitchell who we have seen out here Pound right handed pitchers. The lefties have given him a lot of trouble. Third straight strikeout for Ruffin. Oh, He's gotten the oh. three, four, five men in the order. Talked about Mitchell ever since we saw him for the first time. Kid with all the tools to be a star. As he hits the ball, he can fly. Two sports star, wide receiver on the football team. Les Miles actually gave Paul Maneri permission to let him play spring baseball for the first time in his career. And those reps really have launched this kid. And Les Miles said, you know what, it's best for the kid. He's going to go further in baseball than he is in football. Yeah, this is this is his future, not football. And we understand Les will come up to support the baseball program. He'll be here tomorrow. What would be harder to go in and see the athletic director or to go see less. <laughs> I think less ripped right back up the middle for Mitchell. And with his speed he has stolen a lot of bases all during the season. And here's the draft pick Mitchell will take it in the first round. LeMayu by the Cubs in the second Coleman in the fifth Schimpf in the fifth. Dean and Ochenko after the 10th round. Mitchell at first one out. Ochenko stands in. You want to play a little small ball or you want to swing away? I think with Mitchell you know, on first, he has the ability to steal. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with him at first base. Ochenko's been able to hit the ball out of the you know, ballpark, but you know, it just depends on how you want to play it. Ruffin, I think you're right. 
I think that you can go both ways, and I think you you, you judge this on how good a swing. But with Chance Ruffin out there, you'd see he holds people close, and I'm sure his dad, being an ex-professional and a successful one, has told him the value of holding runners close. He gets it up there pretty quick, too. Mitchell second all time with 70 career steals. And some of those not even getting a good jump. His speed just allows him to steal it. Well, I think in this case, he's going to have to get a good lead and a good jump because Chance Ruffin, you know, Oral's right, he just holds people on so close. They, there's really not that many attempts against him, let alone stolen bases. Says something about Cameron Rupp, too. He's got a good arm behind the plate. When a pitcher has very few attempts, his time to the plate is probably somewhere around 1 2 5 or under because 1 3 is the benchmark for what you usually need to steal unless you have lightning speed and I could tell you just by watching him I'm going to try and get a watch on him but by watching him he's definitely right around 1 1 just because he barely picks the foot up and he's already loaded so a lot of guys will do the slide step but they don't load their shoulders or their arms and that takes them a long time even though their foot was quick. It's a ball and a strike to Ochenko who has struggled out here only 182 but one of those hits was a home run and you can see Mitchell does not have a great lead. One of the things that upsets a, a base dealer also is something the chance is doing which is he's changing his rhythm on each pitch stepping off taking a long time then going short. They can never really find where to put their weight and get that jump. In the air to shallow left Brandon Loy near the left field line and the shortstop will make the catch for the second out of the inning. This is the first game of the national championship final series LSU and Texas the two teams that most people thought were, would make it to the finals and they have and glad you could join us LSU has jumped on top in a matchup of legendary programs 11 national titles between them LSU batting in the second leading one nothing. Helen he will stand in the other thing about Mitchell as a base dealer remember his lack of reps as a baseball player that is a skill that has to be learned no matter how fast you are. Well there are some people that are base stealer fast and just guys that can run fast and there is a big difference with a guy that can get a good jump from a stand you know standing still position get the feel of the pitcher. I was neither by the way. <laughs> I, I was neither of those. So you weren't fast and you probably read pitchers because you were a very intelligent player. Throw down the first. Just got back in there. Good play by Rupp. Well, Mitchell has not false bro bro broke this year. In it, during the hearing, see, he just slips. He was going. He was going to steal, and it came out from under him. Well, it's he's been, lucky to get back. It's been so hot and humid here today, and they put some water on here to keep this field from drying out, but I'm sure just underneath that surface, it's still a little moist. 0 and 1 to Helen E. He fouled out of play. And that takes tremendous athletic ability just to get back. Most people that are down, you blow out, you're, you're done. I mean, you're toast. Rupp did, had a nice throw to first base, but he's still athletic enough to be able to get back. I think the embarrassment factor helps you, too. I, yeah, I'd have been done. <laughs> it would have been, it would have been over. Oh, I like that. That's a good sign. Get the Helen E. He out of it. He's in an 0 and 2 hole right here, and rough and waste one low and away. Just got him on the watch. He's 1.1 to Ooh. the plate, so he's quick. 1 3 is the, the when people start thinking about stealing a base, and you've got somebody over there with almost world class speed in Jared Mitchell. And he's really, he's thinking about going, but it's taking him a while even to get a shot at him. Now that he knows he's got loose footing, who knows? <laughs> Mitchell stolen 35 bases this year. Swing and a miss. He won't get the chance here. Ruffin has fanned four through two innings, but he's down one nothing.
Welcome back. Our score here as we go to the bottom of the second. LSU leading Texas 1-0. The Tigers jumped on top as they have every game in this College World Series. Now let's go to our Home Depot coaching clinic with Oral. Well, Chance Ruffin on the mound with very few steal attempts. The main reason is because he has such a great slide step and he's very fast to home. And the way to learn that is when you look in for the sign as a pitcher, you load up the things you're going to need to throw the ball properly. You don't come up and are very relaxed. And then once you make your delivery after that load, your stride leg is a very low kick and you don't bring your legs and your arm all the way up. So you go a low kick. That way you're very quick to home plate. Let's take a look at him. Watch how he's already preloaded. He's not in a relaxed position. He's very athletic and everything is already loaded. And so he can go to home plate in a real, real hurry. And that's why nobody really even attempts to run off of him. All right. Thanks, Earl. Moldenauer will lead it off for Texas here in the bottom of the second. The junior from Bourne, Texas, third round pick in the draft in 06. Hitting 233 on the year, 222 here at the College World Series. Two for nine takes this one outside. Well, as we watch, you know, different deliveries, you see, you know, Chance Ruffin's delivery, and, and now you get Coleman. You get such a different style. You know, where he's coming from is so far from third base that it's difficult, not only on the righties, but even for a lefty. Just the angle that he creates is uh, is very difficult for left-handed hitters as well. Two balls and no strikes. This one is lined right up the middle for a base hit. The first of the game for the Longhorns. Analyst Kyle Peterson is on Twitter giving live updates and insight on all the college baseball storylines throughout this championship. You can search ESPN College World Series on Facebook and become a fan. You'll get behind the scenes access to video trivia polls and discussions. Join in, have a good time with us, and Kyle right now is tweeting. And sweating. All at the same time. No doubt about that. Heat index 107 here. Cameron Rupp stands in, had a big home run against oh. Arizona State in the bottom of the ninth. Tied it up in a game that it looked for all the world like Arizona State was going to win. His 11th home run of the season over the center field wall with one out against Arizona State on Friday night. Then they got another solo home run and a walk off. This ball lined to left. But caught by Schimpf. Oh, very interesting that Augie Garrido did not bunt Rupp. He moved him up in the order because he wanted him to get more at bats. But there's a story when he was an assistant coach for the USA team, first and second in the sixth inning. And the head coach asked him, Augie, would you bunt here? And he said, I'd bunt Babe Ruth here. <laughs> well, it's not the sixth yet, but getting that run and the way Texas has tried to scratch out runs and lead the nation in sacrifices, he would have bunted Rupp, I think, in another game. Kevin Keyes has a chance now with one on one out. Keyes hitting 308 for the season. And even the though, homegrown product from Austin hitting 364 in the series. Yeah, even though you think he's going to bunt, he, sometimes he doesn't like to just to mix it up so the other coach doesn't know. Well, the thing you get then as a pitcher, you sometimes you'll get that cookie that you give up because you think they're going to bunt. Then you give up a home run and you go, whoa, I shouldn't have assumed they were going to bunt. Well, he's done that in earlier games in a, in a classic bunt situation. He doesn't bunt and he gets his hitter a good pitch. In the air. LeMayu back on the grass in shallow right. Oral, you were talking about the shorter stride, the quicker delivery. What do you give up as a pitcher with the, the lower leg kick and the shorter stride? Well, I appreciate the extra time because in the short little coaching clinic, I can't talk about the preload. Everybody wants to teach a slide step, but they forget the first thing you need to do, which is to load different parts of your body athletically before you come set because a lot of people come set and just kind of stand there as a non athlete watching the runner trying to be quick. You need to preload your legs and your shoulders and your arms so that as you go to home plate there isn't anything you give up. And so normally a pitcher will come set and be unathletic 
But if you load that front hip, you see how he's closed. He loaded his front shoulder. He can be now quick because two or three or four of the parts that he needs to move are already loaded. Brandon Loy, 1 and 0. Oh. The youngster that's just learning that, moving from Little League to all of a sudden the runners can lead off in Pony League and all the other leagues, they don't know what a stretch is about and they don't learn the preload. And so their coaches say, you need to be quick and slide step. And then they feel like, well, I can't throw the ball hard anymore. I can't even throw my curveball from this position. This one down the left field line, twisting foul into the seats. Loy's father played on the Texas 83 team that came to the College World Series. Sitting 295 on the year and has three hits here in Omaha. You know, the equalizer, Texas uh, seen as the underdog right now. You've got Augie Garrido in the dugout. This guy with five national championships, three with Cal State Fullerton and two with Texas. There's nothing he hasn't seen and not a trick he hasn't pulled. Well that's the thing that the kids rely on is any situation he never panics. He you know he'll look at it maybe joke a little bit. You know situations that he's been through he can relieve the pressure from the kids. He likes to have a lot of meetings but he can relieve that pressure. Two and two crossfire on the corner strike three call. Loy is gone. Texas gets its first hit of the game but strands a runner at first. We've played two full, one nothing LSU. We're at the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska, and we check in with Aaron. Well, Mike, this has been the first time that Texas and their head coach, Augie Garrido, has been back to Omaha since 2005. And when you play baseball or you cheer for Texas, the expectation is you're going to be here every single year. So needless to say, the Horns are happy to be back in Omaha. You never take these trips to Omaha for granted. It's in your job description, you know. If you, if you don't know where Omaha is and you don't take the team to Omaha, you have fallen short of the minimum requirements. This is an environment that has allowed me to fulfill my dreams and go beyond my wildest dreams with my life. And guys, just getting to Omaha isn't good enough. Augie had a great quote in the Austin local paper saying at Texas, second place doesn't get it. It would be another disaster in a long line of disasters. And or I know throughout the series, you've been telling great stories of so many people asking Augie, hey, you going to be in Omaha this year? And I'll tell you what, he says, well, I'm going to be there. I just hope I can bring the team. His best story to me is still going down there for the first time. And what was propping open the men's room door? The national runner up trophy. <laughs> That's how they look at second place in Texas. Lined over Tucker's head for a base hit, and Austin Nola leads off the third with a single. There's nothing he hasn't done in this game. He's won more games than anybody, he has won five national championships. Skip Bertman in a tie for second only the legendary Rod Dato has more and he has 10. It's even a movie star for heaven's sakes. LeMayu and Paul Maneri will play small ball. As LeMayu gets Austin Nola over to second base. Well anytime you have these pitchers that are going to you know it's going to be a good pitching duel you know sometimes turnarounds fair play and Paul Maneri's not going to waste any time he's got his big guys coming up in this lineup and you know we, we've seen a lot of bunting you just don't expect it from LSU. Well what happens here too you've got the guy up that hit the home run you have first base open so maybe they build an inning for you by pitching around Ryan and now Paul knows that the meat of his order you want to make it first and second one out go ahead. Seven hits here in Omaha, three of them home runs for Ryan Schimpf, who lit up Chase Ruffin back in the first. High fastball in the light, in the shadows, in the stands. The one thing Paul Maneri said that struck me in our meeting this morning, he is playing this like it's game three. He wants to win 
this ball game he thinks it is critical even though he's the favorite you would think if anybody's going to lose one LSU would be the one who could afford to lose and still have a lot of confidence but he's treating like this like it's a total championship out of And I think it's so much more important for Texas to win this game, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You, you know, you see the way the offense is for LSU, but you know, for Texas, you know, the way they've been winning games, they just feel like they need to be close. You know, if you're close at the end of the game, sure. they're on a roll right now that they've been playing the close games. LSU has not been playing the close games, so anything close, you know, the momentum goes to Texas. They've shown all the different facets of how to win and, and come back from the emotional roller coaster of a final series. You know, they were down to one of the best pitchers in the nation, Mike Leak, by six runs. They came back in one inning in the beginning of a the game. They had a walk off walk, they had a walk off home run. So they've shown discipline when the pressure's on and taking the walk. They've shown clutch hits with the home run on a walk off. They've shown comeback spirit in the beginning of a game when they could have been depressed against an ace pitcher. So they really have shown all facets of the game and all emotional disciplines of the game. Augie Garrido said most teams have sports psychologists. I call David Copperfield. We're doing this <laughs> magically. <laughs> Strike called. And well, Schimpf is gone. That's a big out. Yeah, I really like the way Chance Ruffin went it. Schimpf right here. He came back with the same pitch that he gave up the home run to. He came back with a fastball. He knows he wants to eventually get to this pitch, which is really going to be effective for him. It's that backdoor slider on the outer half. That's the one that's going to get these lefties out right there on the outer half. But he came back with that first pitch. He threw the same pitch, show some confidence, show that he is not afraid that he's going to come right back at you with that same pitch. Five strikeouts now for Chance Ruffin. Runner at second, two out for Blake Dean, who was a strikeout victim back in the first. Oh. Blake Dean may be the most polished hitter on this team. A very short to long stroke. If you're going to lengthen your stroke, you want it after contact. He's driven in 70 runs this year, five of them here in the College World Series. 70 run is a lot oh. of RBIs in a college season. Well, Blake Dean was drafted in the 10th round and some thought maybe he would go higher especially Blake a little disappointed might end up like Lewis Coleman coming back for his next year because he needs to find a position. He's more of a DH and if he's going to play at the professional level and get drafted higher the bat plays we have to see if the fielding will play. It's a guy who got off to a terrible start this year was hitting 225 after the first month of the season. Now he has his season's average up to 335. So it's been a steady improvement since the beginning. Look at that through March 21st 225 and he's hit 15 home runs since then. Two balls in the strike to Dean Nola down at second this one. Popped into shallow right field. Tucker goes back and makes the catch. We go to the bottom of the third. LSU with a one run lead over the Longhorns of Texas. I hope it's crazy. I hope it's loud. I like it when it's loud. Uh, I hope it's the greatest nine innings of my life. Uh, you know, it's, this is what I've been dreaming of doing since I was five, you know, when I first picked up a bat at ball. It's not that you're nervous, but you're anxious. You're ready for it to get here. Just thinking about it, and, and we, at one time we were five wins away. Now we're two. It's unreal, and it's, it's the greatest feeling in the world. Coleman went to his head coach, Paul Maneri, and said he did not want to be on a pitch count during this best two out of three finals. Said he'd pitch tonight as a starter. He's ready to come in in relief in games two or three if he's needed. This was the young man who was so disappointed with his performance a year ago. He decided he was going not to play pro ball until after this year because he wanted to come back and pitch again in the College World Series and have a different result. Well, he's now pitched nine innings here, seven hits, one earned run, only the three walks, nine Ks. He's got a seven scoreless inning streak working, so he is on top of his game. Kyle, you've seen this kid pitch. You like him, don't you? Yeah, he's really good. And I think one of the biggest things that's happened this year is just a small change. When David Grew came in as a pitching coach, he moved from Michigan State, where he was the head coach. One of the first things they tried to do with Coleman is real simple. 
just getting his hand on top of the ball with those mechanics where it throws across his body so the ball's going to move when it comes out of his hands but the goal was instead of the ball coming out of his hands sideways and staying flat when it gets to the zone is to stay on top of it so it's real simple they didn't change his arm angle they just changed his hand angle so instead of that ball coming out like this now the ball's coming out more on top and you see that good sink in motion because when Coleman's in his best guys he's getting a ton of ground balls he hasn't had a ton yet today but a lot of times you see guys start to settle down a little bit that ball starts sinking that's when you see Coleman really getting on top of the ball when he's got a great defense behind him too, Kyle they have been spectacular throughout the series that's up and in to Preston Clark who was out in left field tonight out of Rockwall Texas Coleman has given up four fly ball outs and now Mikey Gibbs wants to go out and talk to him. He's had a strikeout and a ground ball out so far as we enter the third inning. I love the fact that he was saying he wanted to go nine innings. He wants it to be the greatest nine innings of his life. Most of the time you're going to hear oh, I just want it to be a solid start a quality start. He's, he wants I want the best nine innings of my life. Yeah forget that he waited an entire year for this. He's not looking for a quality start. Such a head game as a pitcher with all the time you have to wait getting to the day and then day of for a night game that you just don't want to expend all that energy thinking about how exciting this is going to be. I'm sure he did a very good job because he looks like he's on his game but that was a huge battle for me during starts and during a regular season and then when you get to the playoffs it's just accentuated just waiting around the hotel room walking around the mall going to the ballpark waiting to get your massage or whatever you're going to do to get into your regimen just not expending energy until it was time. 2 2 spoiled. Yeah and I think it's much different for a player because you know another game you can take batting practice there's, a, there's only so much you can do with a pitcher I don't know how you guys ever did it. It's kind of. You find things that you can do but they don't take a lot of energy just you know paying bills that's always fun. <laughs> Swing and a miss one gone here in the third. Tomorrow night the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One will continue at 7 Eastern LSU and Texas in game two of the finals here at the Shrine of College Baseball Rosenblatt Stadium. Hope you'll join us for that one. On a row, pops it up. And the shortstop drifting with the win. Austin Nola makes the catch. Quickly, two gone. Back to the top of the order for Torres, who started the game with a fly ball to center. If you're Texas you have been in these situations all year long not scoring a lot of runs playing a lot of tight ball games. So there's not going to be a whole lot of tension on them until the innings start to wind down and then the pressure ratchets up. And I think that Coleman looks like he's on his game. Doesn't no, he? Absolutely. And that's something that. You know obviously this offense is used to you know I, I think sometimes you kind of warm up into the game knowing that your your pitching and defense is going to keep you in it. You just want to be within striking distance. Fouled out of play. Thing is there's zero on the board for Texas and Coleman really hasn't been on his game you know he's fallen behind two and oh three and oh battled back and now that fastball like Kyle talked about he's kind of getting his rhythm and the ball starting to come down. He's able to pitch at two levels low and high he'll even become more difficult to hit. Lined but caught by the second baseman LeMayu. Torres ripped it but it's a line drive out three up three down in the third still one nothing. The road to Omaha is long arduous destination a national title. Nothing is set, so don't forget to stop and see the sights. 
because you never know what you might miss. Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One. Now it's time for our Coke Zero game track. What a good ball game it has been. Only four hits between the two teams. LSU scored on a, holo, a solo home run in the first. Coleman has been virtually unhittable. Ruffin has been nearly as good. It was a burner today, and for those still sitting in the sun, it still is. What? When we started the game, the heat index was 107. And it sure doesn't feel like it's gone down much. This one's fouled out of play by Micah Gibbs, the catcher. Anything you can do to stay cool. What? Well, water sales must be through the roof today. Even warm water. Sure. Yeah, we look at Micah Gibbs wearing number 33, and Paul Maneri thinks of everything. This is a switch hitting captain catcher. Think of Jason Veritek. He wanted the pro scouts to think Jason Veritek. He runs the staff. Pitchers love him. And he was thinking about helping them, remind them who he's going to look like maybe someday in a big league uniform. Did he put a C on his jersey? I don't no. think I he didn't put a C on his jersey. He didn't think of everything. Well, <laughs> he did not think of everything. Maybe he had another reason. There's a C there in the SEC. Okay. <laughs> Is that the secretary or the ca captain? <laughs> no. One ball, two strikes. Gibbs struck out back in the first. You know, it's one thing to play a tight game against a team that can't explode. It's another thing if you're Texas knowing, well, we're in this game, it's tight, everything's good, but you're playing against a piece of dynamite. This one will get back in the seats. Well, the pitchers know you can't afford to make a mistake against LSU. They've seen them enough out here. They lose mistakes. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing for me to, to look at their slugging percentage coming in this that 675 slugging percentage and look up all time at second right now to only their team from the 1998 their university. Went after a high fastball and didn't get it. That is the sixth strikeout. For Chance Ruffin, let's check in with Aaron. Mike, another update on the sweat humidity factor update here. Cameron Rupp, you're talking about the C on his jersey. Well, he's already gone in and changed his jersey once uh, this evening. And in speaking to Texas equipment manager, they've tried to ask Chance Ruffin if he wanted to go ahead and change his jersey as well. They were mentioning the sleeves on both sides of his jersey just absolutely soaked. He said he doesn't want to do it superstition-wise, wants to leave it alone. But the equipment manager says they're going to keep an eye on it because when he walked back down here, I mean, the sweat was just coming off the sleeves onto his arms. And really, it's not cosmetic. It's not the way you look. There's there's a reason for it. During very hot games for me, I wore sleeves all the way down to my wrists. And I didn't like the sun burning my arms. And I wanted the sweat completely soaked up. I didn't want it getting down onto my hand in case the bubble gum didn't work. Our director Scott Johnson had that shot and said there's a real fan. <laughs> Thanks Scott. And I think another thing that happens you know nowadays the way clothing is it's not that heavy cotton anymore. I think those are the days when guys used to switch their shirts all right. the time now you know they absorb sweat it's not as nasty or heavy it doesn't just weigh you down it's just how you feel and if you're all right with it being a little wet. You know, stay with it. You, you don't need to change that as often as you used to in the old days. Right. The, the new stuff really wicks off the moisture, the fabrics oh, they've come up with, and the technology of the clothing. Now Mitchell stands in. Seven strikeouts for Chance Ruffin in this game. Five have come against the three, four, five hitters. So his toughest opponents, he has been toughest on them. 
This one hit to straightaway center field. Connor Rowe back, back, and makes the running catch on the track. This guy's one of the best center fielders in the country, and he showed you a little range and a little speed there to chase that one down. A bullet off the bat of Jared Mitchell. And if that gets over his head, Mitchell's got at least a triple. This kid could fly, but so can Connor Rowe. We've played three and a half. It's a one nothing game LSU over Texas. Let's check in with Robin Ventura. Well, the difference in the game right now is the home run by Ryan Schimpf. And one of the things you see from the LSU team and Schimpf is they like that open stance and they like to face the pitcher, get an open view with both eyes looking at the pitcher. And just to be able to stay close, it's going to be difficult for them. But if we look at Schimpf, he stays close, gets an elevated pitch and goes right through it. As you see right here, he doesn't close himself off and doesn't open too quick, nice and soft, brings his hands through. And anything in the middle part of the plate is going to be very dangerous. Anything that Chance Ruffin gets on the outside, guys are going to be pulling off. So for them, they have to look for a ball inside, and he's going to try and trick them on the outside. When you see a guy with that open stance, are you thinking a pitch that has a little run on it? Are you thinking backdoor slider? You don't want to be fooled by the stance. You want to see where they are when their front foot lands because, like Robin said, they could be diving from that position or they could be staying open. So you read hitters from when their front foot lands and they're in hitting position, not always from their stance. And we have a beach ball delay. Something that I was used to playing at Dodger Stadium for all those years. Never really understood why you brought a beach ball no. to a baseball game. But about five years ago, a guy had one out here and he had a string attached to it and he pulled the old Harlem Globetrotters trick. Security would come out and just as the guy bent over to pick up the beach ball, he'd yank it back in the stands. Talk about funny. <laughs> Except to the security guy. Travis Tucker leads it off for Texas here in the fourth. When they'd like to have a few tough at bats and get the pitch count up on Lewis Coleman, who's just been nails against them. This one's hit to deep left field. Schiff going back at the wall, and it's gone. That is the third, I said third, home run of the entire year for Travis Tucker, and it ties it at one. You know, Mike, if I'm pitching against a scrappy team, I am not going to throw fastballs up and in. I think that's the one place that they will have power. I'm going to try and hammer them low and away and have them beat me to the opposite field. Lewis Coleman likes to run that ball up and in on him, but I think it's a mistake. He can run it down and in on him, but he really, when he needs a strike, needs to pitch away with the fastball to the smaller hitters. 17th home run allowed this year by Lewis Coleman. And Tucker has tied it for the Longhorns. Brandon Belt stands in. He is 0 for 1. When the LSU crowd, which dominates this gathering tonight, really quieted by that one. And Belt grounds out to first. Well, you would think that small ball is the way they've come in. And, you know, obviously, Coach Garrido didn't bunt earlier in the game with a guy on first base trying to get a guy over. I mean, they've really been feasting on the home runs in this World Series. So I'm sure in his mind, Coach Garrido's thing, maybe my offense has changed a little bit. We have a little more pop. Or this, this ballpark's smaller. You know, you're giving guys a chance. Well, when they play at home, a lot of these guys have warning track power in a big ballpark. You come out here and it's 375 to the power alleys and they can get it out of here. Yeah, and the winds, usually the winds going with you. Yeah. Carry here, it's very hot. Moldenauer, deep center. Matuk looking up. Just like that. 
And for Moldenauer, that's only his second home run this year. Both of them at the College World Series. Nothing during the regular season, and Texas has the lead. And you hit one out to dead center. That's a bomb. Well, that ball is crushed. You know, it's not carrying that far with the wind. This is all just straight power, right down the middle. And Moldenauer just—I mean, you just unload to get the ball up over the batter's eye. You got to crush this. And you know, again, I, I think their offense is just changing enough to where now they feel like they have guys that can hit it out of the ballpark. It just changes your psyche. We've got to remember they're still young men and they can get stronger throughout a year. I mean, three months to a 19, 20 year old is a lot different than a 26, 27 year old man. And these guys are maturing and getting stronger. And they're gaining confidence when you're in a ballpark that rewards that type of hit. Well, the curtain called. He deserved it on that. Molded hour with his second home run. So you have two guys. Who now have a combined five home runs and they both hit shots in this inning. Breaking ball low to Cameron Rupp, who has three home runs here in Omaha, of his total of 11. So he had eight during the regular season, three here. Well, they certainly didn't get stronger since last week, so I'm going to go with the smaller ballpark. Well, sometimes you play in a ballpark, if, if it's a big ballpark as a hitter, you, you know, you're not trying to hit the ball in the air. You want to keep it on the ground, more line drive. You finally get to a ballpark that's smaller, you, you feel stronger and it's easier to hit. Plenty of room out there this time for Monto. The last two College World Series games, five of Texas's six runs have come on solo home run. Dishfog Field, 405 power alleys as opposed to 375. And the numbers are just remarkable. This ball's launched to left center. Three solo home runs in the inning. Kevin Keyes unloads. Augie Garrido's got to be thinking I may never bunt again. Well, Key stands tall at the plate and he's a tall Texan right now. And he likes the ball low. See the upright bat? See how he wants to drop the bat down on the ball. Of the right-handed hitters that you might pitch up, he would be one of them to jam him. But he drops the head of the bat on that ball and just almost golfs it out of here. And Texas is beating LSU at its own game. This is only the second time LSU has trailed at the College World Series. They were behind Virginia 4-3. That was in the fifth, but they immediately came back and got three runs to regain the lead. Aaron? Mike, we've seen time and time again Augie Garrido, master of timing. I swear, you can't make this up. Before this inning, he told his team, you are just barely missing the ball. Get Lewis Coleman right here. And then what happened? <laughs> Hello? Oh. Three runs. And they've gotten him three times with long flies. Well, he didn't win 1,700 games by accident. It's a tremendous motivator. Oh. Brandon Lloyd, nobody on, two gone here in the fourth. Texas has taken the lead, 3-1 over LSU. This ball's hit toward the gap in right center, but Mitchell with that great speed chases it down. The inning is over, but three, count them, three solo home runs for the Texas Longhorns, and they have the lead for the first time here in the finals of the College World Series. Power on display where they had been a small ball team coming in. Small ball no longer for the Longhorns.
Texas is taking the lead over LSU 3 1 as we go to the top of the fifth. Let's check in with Aaron. Mike, thanks. Augie, I heard you tell your team you're barely missing Lewis Coleman. Why were your guys able to jump on him the way they did? Well, I think they shortened up their swings a little bit and they've been very patient in letting the ball. Uh, be a ball down in the zone and looking for balls up in the zone. I got to ask because the guys were saying it upstairs. Will you ever bunt again after we've seen some of these bombs out here? Um, we'll have to wait and see. But when you're two hole hitter who hasn't hit a home run all year hits one. It gets uh, pretty exciting but this game is just getting started. What have you seen out of Chance Ruffin as the game has progressed. I think, he, I think he's settled down. I think he's hitting his spots better and he's he's pitching to the areas where the troubles ha uh, the hitters have more trouble. Augie thanks. It's my pleasure. All right guys. Aaron when Texas has more than one home run in a game they are undefeated this year 11 and 0. Ochenko will lead it off for LSU and they are not used to being in this position. They are 36 and 3 against right handers LSU is and Ruffin is starting to settle in. Pitch oh. count is still down four innings only 57 pitches after those first two there. Well I like what Coach Garrido was saying to these pitching to an area that's difficult those sliders are the ones that are just going to be tough on hitters. Ochenko fouls this one with the plate. Ochenko playing first base for this club, but he was drafted as a catcher by Toronto in the 11th round this year, and they feel that's where his future is. He was the starting catcher on this club as a sophomore, moved to first to make the club better. Three balls in the strike to Ochenko, the bottom third of the order. Scheduled to hit here for LSU in the fifth. And you always want to see how a team responds after the other team grabs the lead. Ripped but foul. You know, one of the things, Mike, that you look at also is a pitcher and how he responds to a home run. And so many things with Lewis Coleman look good that inning. Even though he gave up three solos, he went right back in there. He attacked. And that tells you that you can then make an adjustment. Because the first thing you do as a pitcher is you have to throw strikes to find out what they're hitting. No Checked swing. his swing and successfully. You can keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series stories and information by logging on to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. So Chinko, who is fan seven, gives up a base on balls. His first of the game. Ochenko walks. And now Ruffin will get a visit from Cameron Rupp. Well, we've seen both catchers go out there and do that. They do a great job, you know, catching a pitcher before it starts to spiral out of control. Well, especially with a guy on first base, you know, Ochinko's not going to run. Just go ahead and concentrate on the hitter at the plate. You, you know, you have a great delivery to home plate. It's very fast. Keep that double play in order. Get yourself a ground ball. Helene, he has struggled out here only one for 13 in Omaha. He's been shut down in his last 10 at bats. And now Ruffin will get a visit from the pitching coach. LSU 36 and 3 against right handers. What makes a, a left handed batter, Robin, so much tougher? Because the left handed power on LSU can give them trouble. Yeah, I mean, they, they're predominantly a left handed lineup. And you just see the righties better. I mean, obviously, with the open stance, any anything coming inside, you know, the guys are usually open, want the ball in. You can dive out over the plate and catch that one on the outer half. But, but really, against right handed pitchers, you have to be more of a change up guy. Than just a slider in, in same speed guy. You really have to mix up your speeds back and forth more than location because guys can get to it. They stand right on the plate and it becomes difficult. 2 0 to Helen Ehe. Popped up into shallow left. 
Clark coming in a few steps will make the catch one gone. Well, when you had either a catcher or pitching coach or somebody else come out to talk to you, uh, were you into it or you just wanted to be left alone? Depending on my mood and what was happening, uh, you really you want to listen to hear what the nugget is, but you're out there really with your own toolkit. <laughs> trying this to figure it out. Skied on the infield in foul territory. Brandon Belt over there for the second out of the inning, and Austin Nola fouls out. Well, probably the most famous exchange that we ever heard was between Bob Gibson and Tim McCarver. And McCarver would go out to talk to Gibson, who was had that ridiculous earned run average, and he would say, get away. The only thing you know about pitching is you can't hit it. <laughs> so that was, you know, just an abject dismissal. Isn't Bob Gibson a Omaha native? Yes, he is. There's a street right out here that's named for him, Bob Gibson Drive. It also depends on who the catcher is. I, I think, you know, for pitchers that have a lot of respect for that catcher and they come out, the conversation goes, at least the ones I've been, <laughs> I've been around, they go a little different. If, if the pitcher's the guy that's the, you know, I, I would say the, the more dominant ego, it goes a lot different from the catcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you doing on my mound? LeMayu takes a high fastball. He is 0 for 1 officially a sacrifice and a ground out. Two out now with Ochenko at first. LeMayu out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Almost everything hit off of Ruffin has been in the air. And already DeSherry. The right hander is up throwing for Texas as they just don't want to see LSU produce a big inning and get back in this or take the lead again. Well, I think another thing that could be happening that the heat is definitely yeah. a factor in, in the pitchers and that you know that could be part of the reason too. One of the ways to nullify a great offensive club is to never give him too many looks at the same pitcher. And once you've had to go through the lineup a couple times and plus the heat, you're right, Robin. They don't want these guys to hit off of somebody who doesn't have their full strength. That is the 69th pitch of the ball game and a good one for a strikeout. Right after the break, we'll talk to head coach Paul Maneri of LSU. He'll join Kyle live from his dugout. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One. What a ball game. First game of the two out of three finals, three to one. Here's Kyle with Paul Maneri. Thank Kyle. you, Mike. And Paul, that last inning, Lewis Coleman really breezed through the first three, then gives up three solo home runs right there. From your standpoint, what did you see that was different than that? Well, I thought he elevated the ball a little bit, Kyle. The, the last one was a good pitch a kid went down and got, but I thought the other two were a little bit up in the zone. and. You know, he's not really getting the low pitch, and I'm afraid he's trying to adjust to what he's getting, so he's raising the ball a little bit. But he's pitching well. I mean, he just, got, you know, it's a hitter's night. I mean, it's so warm, and the, the wind's blowing a little bit out. So I just went out and told him, you know, look, you, you're just giving up solo home runs. That, if you're going to give up a home run, you're better off doing that. So let's just keep get, holding him here, and it's going to be a hitter's night. We're going to have to score some runs to win. So how about that? I mean, Schimpf hits a home run right away, and then offensively, Ruffin's pretty, been pretty good since then. What needs to change at the play? Well, we're having a tough time with this slider. That's the big thing. And, you know, we've got a lot of right-handed hitters in the lineup, and he's he's throwing well. You know, you got to give the kid credit. But, you know, we're gonna, there's still a lot of baseball to play, and we got to make an adjustment. We'll get him. All right, Paul. Thanks. Thank and Coleman called by Paul Maneri the final piece of the puzzle when he decided to come back. The fourth inning, they really touched him up after he had dominated, and all three of those hits were solo home runs, and all were hit really well. Well, they were all on fastballs, too. And one was down, but two were up. 
And I think the one he threw down was the wrong one because that was the, the low ball hitter. Preston Clark will lead it off. He's the number eight man in the order here in the fifth inning. Well, the other thing he did, he also leaves the ball inside. You know, when you're going to leave the ball inside and not get the run that you normally would, you know, that's right in that hitter zone for that righty. This one's hit hard, but foul into the left field seats. If I was Mr. Coleman right now, I would start thinking about controlling the bat head a little bit by changing speeds a little bit more, taking a little more off my breaking ball, taking a little bit off of my two seamer to get them a little bit out in front because either pitch that he's thrown, they are squaring up pretty well right now. Well, he's not he's not controlling that outer part of the plate. I, I think that's the angle that he's creating on these righties. You really got to throw that slider. That's just who knows if it's going to be a strike or not. That's the that's the doubt you really want to put in the hitter's mind as a hitter. You know that's the one especially with two strikes. Anything close you're going to have to go after. So if he's going after that outer half that's the one that becomes the most difficult for you. Two and two to Clark hit hard down to third. Helen he comes up and throws him out one gone. Kyle what do you see from down there. You know. My mechanics were a little bit like Coleman's when I was growing up and, and the thing that I always had trouble with it seems like he's having trouble with today and that's throwing the fastball away to a right hander or into a left hander that natural movement's going to take it into a right hander but it almost seems like Texas offensively has eliminated that fastball away from the right hander and so you see that slider that misses away on the right side and they don't swing at it. Oh, yeah. Biggest key is because they haven't seen fastballs thrown to that side of the plate so they almost the minute that ball starts on that side they just eliminate the fact that it's a strike I think. He needs to get back to throwing the fastball on that side of the plate because it just seems like they're almost eliminating the outside part of the plate to a righty. Oh. That one's outside. This is Connor Rowe with the game winning walk off home run against Arizona State. Rowe only seven home runs this year, but Augie Garrido thought he could hit it out if he got a pitch up. That's where his power is. He got one and he lost it for the game winner. And he was. You know, when he got up there, he thought, you know, I'm a, I'm a little unsure because I look over him. He thought he was getting a take, and he gets a swing away, and you know that breaking ball is right there in the middle of the plate. Perfect home run pitch. That's when you know you got the feeling. You know, especially when the coach is giving <laughs> you the swing away. That's right. Row a tremendous defensive center fielder. Fastball in the corner. Now that's the one right there that if he can continue to throw that pitch that's the one that's going to set up everything else for him. Two and two to Connor Rowe. Took something off that time and struck him out. Now what Oral was saying you've got to take a little off that slider was a little slower than most of the other ones but it's a perfect pitch. Guys are reacting to that inside part of the plate and that one's just tailing out getting right on the outer half. All right let's check in with Oral. One of the things that will help you get to that outside corner as a starting pitcher as any pitcher is where you do with your feet they turn the whole world so when you can't reach that outside corner as he steps back you watch his heel comes in front of his toe and he turns the whole world towards third base and one of the things he could do is have it when he steps back and then plants his foot is to bring his foot into a more neutral position and now you turn the whole world so 60 feet 6 inches away with an inch or two adjustment brings that outside part of the plate into play for the pitcher. Everybody used to tell me everybody used to tell me I can't throw my sinker to the outside part of the plate. And so when you throw the ball to the outside part of the plate is the same exact pitch. You just have to turn the world. You stand on one leg for a living and you can get to that outside part if you just keep your foot going and get it turned correctly. Torres grounds through the hole between first and second and he has a single. If you go back there is basic mechanics to everything and you can get away with some flaws but not very many and usually the correction is a mechanical change. Right in any time a guy is unorthodox that that's one of the things that comes in. I mean you know Lewis Coleman is effective. This is just the way he does it but adjustments are a little bit different. Ah! Adjustments become harder to teach him because of what Oral was talking about that his heels actually in front of his toe. So everything's different for him that would be for a guy with perfect mechanics. Sure. 
And you saw that graphic on only three swings and misses out of 63 pitches. So they're getting a piece of everything against Lewis Coleman. And this is Tucker who had a solo home run to start off the fourth inning. Pretty pitch on the corner there. I see from the stretch Coleman's foot is actually in a neutral position which would make it easier for him to throw the ball low and away to a righty. So you see the heel and the toe are in neutral. So that turns the whole world. But from the windup, he has the heel the other way. So it would be very hard. He uses his great athletic ability and eye hand coordination to hit spots Parker. like that. Spot hit. Inning over. Well, from a neutral position, he can reach that outside corner right. He's because he turns the whole world by standing on only the back leg. From the windup, having trouble reach that. Maybe there needs to be an adjustment in his windup so he doesn't set up the innings. Three to one, Texas over LSU here in the sixth. And my dad and some other businessmen came up with the idea of having a new ballpark built in the Omaha area, which people were saying, well, no, this is a bad investment. We're spending, if you can imagine, $500,000 to build this new ballpark, which, well, it would be ludicrous to say that we won't miss it. I would certainly have liked to have seen it stay here, but I certainly understand the decision. I'm not so sure that Johnny might have agreed that perhaps it was time for a new ballpark. Johnny Rosenblatt, an athlete and a politician, and the College World Series would certainly not be the same without his tremendous contributions, not only to the series, but to the city of Omaha. And hopefully, this event will never go anywhere. It belongs here. And with the new stadium, it's at least assured of being here another 25 years. Shimp will lead it off here in the sixth. And LSU has been very quiet since Schimpf was the second hitter in the first inning. Laced a home run. Oh. And outside of that, Chance Ruffin has struck out eight and dominated this lineup. Yeah, I think that first home run, he was trying to just get ahead. Now he's been pitching. I mean, he's been actually going at hitters with all kinds of different pitches and Locations, speeds, you know, he's, he's comp competing more than just trying to get ahead with a first strike. He's competing on the first pitch. This is his second start. The first one, he was really roughed up. Went only two innings, gave up seven hits, and coming into this game, his ERA was 18. But we're seeing tonight what kind of a pitcher he really is. The guy that won 10 games and saved two others this year. There's a called strike three on Shimp, the ninth strikeout victim. This venerable facility uh, will be replaced in two years, but in 1947 they began construction when the College World Series was still at Kalamazoo. And in 1950, they had a chance to host it for the first time. Oh. And it, with the uh, the roof structure, it does look like a late 40s, 50s ballpark. It's got a real charm to it. Oh. Boy, and Chance Ruffin is just pouring it in there now. Another look at Rosenblatt in 64, named for the former mayor. And they have expanded it time and time again to make it just the best minor league facility you've ever seen. There's a base hit for Blake Dean trying to get something started here in the sixth. Drives it straight back up the middle. Well, I think LSU has to stay with small ball for a little bit until a home run happens to come if they go up there trying to win the game with every swing they could get out of their game and the way Chase Ruffin is pitching changing speeds and changing locations that would play right into his hand if they're going for the home run. Micah Gibbs has fanned twice in this game. The three four five hitters for LSU have dominated play out here but not today. Seven at bats, only one hit, five strikeouts. 
Well, even if you have an explosive offense, Orioles, right, you still have to find a way to get base hits. You have to score that way, too. You can't just rely on home runs. You have to be able to get a feel in your lineup to be able to hit the ball and have good at bats when you go to the plate. Anytime you go up there and you're just counting on a guy hitting a, you know, a home run, you, you lose the rhythm even as an offense. Well, remember, LSU is a team that averaged almost 11 runs a game and is batting 368 as a team here in Omaha. So they are just waiting to explode. But Chance Ruffin has really dominated them since that solo home run back in the first. Closer Austin Wood, the left hander, in a pitching staff that has very few effective lefties. Oh. Well, I think that that's just going to the whip. You know that this team struggles against left handers and if you can find a way to get to Austin Wood who has been stretched out I think he thinks maybe two or three innings would be OK but you know he wants to get to Austin Wood eventually and if you know he feels this is the time to get those that out with these lefties in that lineup you, you go to the whip right away and hopefully you can bring somebody else in later. Both of these coaches talked about the importance of this game that they would use. They would use their pitching staff like it was the third game of the series except for perhaps one starter. So they're looking at using anybody they have to to win this first ball game. They both think it's that important. Hit and run and it's through. It'll be first and third as Micah Gibbs. Bounces one through. This ball gets away. Nobody's going to be able to advance. Well, right here, you, you know, Paul Maneri has the confidence in Micah Gibbs to start the runner, Blake Dean, at first base. What happens right here is you watch both fielders are going to second base. Somebody has to make a communication call there that I have it or you have it. You can't have both guys go and. Micah Gibbs puts that ball in play and right now all you got to do is put it in play in the middle of the field and it's a base hit because both guys are at second base. I saw Travis Tucker break out of the corner of my eye the second baseman and well, he had fast, no chance fastball away so the communication would have been early you see middle infielders put their glove up all the time open mouth close mouth open mouth on the captain side means I have it close mouth means you take it fastball away to a left handed hitter in a three two count would mean that the second baseman has it. And the th shortstop stays at home. Even though the ball ended up going through second, shortstop really should have been at home on that pitch right there. Unless they have a huge scouting report that he's a dead pull hitter. Well, he's got a dead pull hitter swing, that's for sure. Well, sometimes as a hitter, you see kind of a peripheral of who's moving. But both of them are moving, so your reaction <laughs> is natural as a left handed hitter that you want to hit it through the hole anyway, because that hole on the first base side is open with the first baseman holding the runner. But now when everybody goes to the bag all you got to do really is put it in play and you feel like you know you're going to have a hit if you get it on the ground. Now that meeting may be as much about straightening out that communication as it was visiting with the pitcher chance Ruffin, because you've got Mikey Matuk, who has had a big college World Series with only one out and two runners aboard. Gibbs did his job and grounded it through the right side and now Montuk who was also struck out twice. Fouls this one out of play hacking on that first pitch. He is five out of 14 here in Omaha and this is the first time LSU has had two men aboard in any inning tonight. Against Chance Ruffin. Infield is back to try to get the double play with one out. May have gotten away with that one. It was a breaking ball that hung over the plate. Well, this one is juicy if you're the hitter. Mikey looking at it, and it just kind of backs up. And Robin will tell you, sometimes you'd rather that ball break correctly than back up on you because it fools you just because it goes the opposite way of the spin. Oh. Tried the same pitch and missed inside. Well, sometimes even you know with the way the shadows still are, that backup slider, you're expecting that thing to come back over the plate, and it just hangs there long enough to make you flinch. And anytime a guy flinches as a hitter, it just totally disrupts the path of your bat. Ball and two strikes, struck him out. The ninth strikeout for Chance Ruffin.
Well, Ruffins is continuing to pound with his slider. And he's been, ever since he's given up the home run with his fastball, this has really been the bread and butter for him. He is just hammering these guys with sliders, and they can't figure out a way to stay back and just take this the other way. They're still trying to hit the gorilla ball, pull everything. You have to stay back far enough and try and hit that ball the other way. And if you are out in front, then you can hit it. But when you're pulling everything, you know, he, he's got you right where he wants you. Nine strikeouts, only one off of his season's high, but Chance Ruffin is not going to get a chance to match that. Check it, it's 10. He has matched his season high. What a performance for Chance Ruffin. He will give way to a standing ovation. He leaves with a 3 1 lead. Low stretch from Austin Wood. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Swung on at a ground ball. That threw on the right side of base hit. Coming in to score is Connor Rowe. The longest game in college baseball history. Longhorns win. Austin Wood, an unimaginable 162 pitches. An unimaginable 13 innings, 12 and a third of them hitless in relief in the longest game in NCAA history. Now he comes in in the sixth, runners at first and third to face a dangerous lefty, Jared Mitchell. And Ruffin's day is done. Boy, he was good. Ties his season high with 10 Ks. A deep hydration a problem here. He's cramping up from all the water he's losing in his body. His calf is cramping up on him. But season high in strikeouts, but only five and a third inning. Yeah. Five and, and once two once it starts, uh, unless you have an IV, you can't make it stop. You cannot drink enough to get rid of cramps. Great night for that young man. We have seen Mitchell just hit screaming line drives off of right handers and been overmatched by lefties. That's part of the fact that he is still an athlete learning how to play baseball and has been severely limited as reps lefty against lefty. You can't imagine that he's had many at all. Well, he his shoulder that. in on that one yeah, pretty well, though, didn't he? He saw those numbers uh, on Jared Mitchell, and it just makes the decision easier for Augie Garrido. You, you know, you got a guy that's battling on the mound. He might be able to make it through. He's cramping up. Right. You might want to give him that chance, but it just makes the decision so much easier to bring in Austin Wood, the lefty, to get left on left. Tied with Houston Street. With 15 saves on the single season list, that's number three all time. 15 saves, six wins. So 21 victories he's been involved in this year. And there's the delay here, I'm not sure why. What I think is happening is the balls are getting wet in the umpire's sack mm. because the umpire sweats so much that they have to then change and he has just called to the umpire's room to get a new bag for the balls that he puts in because you end up with a wet side. Hold on. Hold on. Well they should come up with a ball boy or something and just walk yeah, them out. Just hand them a few. Line to left center. Mitchell with his first terrific at bat, and he is flying toward third. Holy cow, if they take their time, he's got an inside the park home run, world class speed, and he bombed it off of Austin Wood. Well, I'll tell you what, he's not an automatic out from the left side. 263. You'll see big leaguers with these kind of splits, left right splits. He does a great job staying on it. And I'm not sure Austin Wood shouldn't have thrown him a breaking ball, but watch this young man run. We saw him chase the ball in right center already today. He is just 
getting on his stride and going. And that trap is really busting out from under him. He's got so much pressure in those legs of strength. He's busting the dirt up. And he slid just for the fun of it. He was in there by five strides. Well, he did the first thing you should do as a lefty. If a guy's dropping down on you, aim to left center. That, that's going to be your best chance to get a hit. If you get a fastball like he did, that, that is your best chance. You should have got a slider to start off that at bat. Two RBIs. He has tied this game at three. And here's a kid you could actually see steal home with his speed. Chop toward third. Torres makes the long throw and got him. Ochenko is gone. But Jared Mitchell, they bring in a left-handed closer to pitch to him, and he crosses him up. A bullet to left center for a triple and drives in two. We are tied at three. Three three in the sixth at the College World Series. Let's take a look back at our Capital One image. Capital One presents flashback images. 1987. Needing a hit in his final at bat to keep his 58 game hitting streak alive. Oklahoma State's Robin Ventura hits a sharp grounder to second that was ruled in error. Ending what remains the longest hitting streak in Division One history. For more great images, tune into the College World Series presented on ESPN and ESPN2 by Capital One. Really one of the signature events, not just in college baseball, but in baseball in general. That's, uh, could you believe it actually went 58 games? I mean, that's a ridiculous number. No, I mean, you know, you kind of go through the season, then you get here, and, and, you know, the good thing, we won the game, so it wasn't, you know, it didn't matter. It was, you know, it's about advancing and, and getting further into the College World Series. So, I, you know, it was lucky that you didn't even care, really. We won the game, so everybody was happy. You've been in the zone every once in a while. What's it like to be in the hitting zone I like forgot that? for a lot of years. I wish <laughs> I, I, I could have remembered. I'll tell you what. Can it be that long ago? This one's hit to straightaway center. And almost missed play. Mato spun 360 and still caught it. Whoa. Well, you have to be very athletic. I mean, this ball's hit fairly well by Brandon Belt, and he goes back. He loses the ball once. Now he does the karaoke to, to pick it back up, and I, I think he's actually cramping up out in the outfield, too. So, I mean, that might be a, yeah. a reason for the way he went at that ball is it's so hot, and, you know, guys aren't really getting the fluids. It's not, you know, it's just it's not easy to be out there when it's this hot. I was very surprised that the teams took infield and batting practice earlier today. I would have hit in the inside cages here down the left field line and not brought my team on the field. I talked to Robin. He says, but you have to do something. You have to get the nerves out. But the hydration becomes a problem, and we're seeing it right here. We saw it with Austin Wood, and now we're seeing it. You have to hydrate during the game, but you have to hydrate before the game. If you don't do that, no matter how much you drink during right. the game, you're, you're meat. It's well, it, the day before is the more important time to sure. hydrate. Yeah, absolutely. And then one of the things LSU did today, they did they took BP, but their guys didn't do their normal workout in the outfield. They, they were very quick with being on the field. They might have taken five ground balls, and they got their starting lineup off the, off the field. So they weren't out there the whole time, but, you know, obviously it's becoming a factor. And it's hard to fight that once it starts. Well, I mean, you can make the that. cramp go away, but you he doesn't know his next time when oh, he goes sure. to burst on next it, if move. the muscle's going to shut down on him. 
Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Smirnoff Ice on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. The Yankees and the Braves. ESPN News will be shown in New York and Atlanta. Then Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN at 8 Eastern. The Yankees wrap up the series against the Mets. Both games part of the AL NL Showdown presented by State Farm. Heat index 104, so it's only gone down three degrees since we started this ball game. And Oral, you're absolutely right. You get rid of it, then the next time those muscle fibers are compressed, you get another cramp working for you. you know, of course, I don't know if this is accurate, but I think it is because our doctors told us about why you hydrate the day before, and they say you have to be hydrated at the cellular level, and it takes hours and hours and hours for the water to get into the cellular level compared to just into your stomach. And you know you feel better and you quench your thirst. Well, fortunately for Matuk, cramp or no cramp, he was able to spin himself around a couple of times, like Linda Blair, and make the catch in center field. Moldenauer with two hits to his credit, a single and a home run, lost this to deep left. It's gone. Russell Moldenauer. He's hit three home runs all season, every one of them in the College World Series, and two of them today. One to center, one to left. Well, we're really seeing how the ballpark is playing as an offensive ballpark. This not ball is not hit that well. He does a good job staying behind and hitting it the opposite way, but it's got side spin on it. It's not like the one he crushed to center. You see, that ball was very close to being a foul ball the way it was kind of deflected out there to left field. But the wind's blowing out that way, and the ball's really carrying in this heat. Moldenauer, three for three, a single and two solo home runs, and a curtain call for him. And it's 4 3 Texas bottom of the sixth. This is a team that has played small ball all year long. They lead the nation in sacrifice bunts. Everybody bunts. And I mean everybody. Not today. Well, they, I mean, if you look at their lineup, they have size. It's not just, they're not a small team. They're not one of those teams that just has little guys at every position. They're pretty good. Pretty good sized team and you know eventually you get to a ballpark like this just the conditions make you a better hitter you, you don't feel like you have to put that much behind it you don't have to put a big swing on you just really have to put the barrel on it and get a good angle on it. Moldenauer only the second player with two home runs in a championship series game. And Texas with a season high four home runs in this game. They brought oh, out the big the bats the at the right the time. Cameron Rupp with three home runs in Omaha. What a surprising game. Texas was a team that wasn't even picked to win the conference. Texas A&M was the preseason favorite. And now the Longhorns have come in here against the Bashers of LSU. They've hit 10 home runs in the College World Series. That equals LSU. Of course, four today hasn't hurt those numbers. All solo shots. Swing and a miss, and Rupp is gone for the second out of the inning. All season long, small ball, small ball, and small ball. Only 18% of their runs came from home runs all year. Here in College World Series land, 48%. Up the middle, base hit. Keys, a soft single to center field. That's his second hit. Also had a home run early. What's going through Lewis Coleman's mind right now? 
Well he's probably real confident he's in the stretch he hasn't given up a hit in the stretch he's only given up the home runs when he's been in the windup. And so he's been able to to make his pitches from the stretch. It's from the windup where he's gotten hurt and all on fastballs. Oh. He's given up 20 home runs this year. Did you ever just go from the stretch if you felt better. You know just certain games that you felt better. Yeah. If I had a real problem from the windup maybe the fifth or sixth inning maybe 10 times in my career that'd be over 17 oh. years so not very often but yeah if you were so lost that maybe you had a lead still you know you were up eight to nothing and all of a sudden you couldn't find it from the windup and you said boy I've got you know I got it's now eight to two eight to three I'm going to go from the stretch I feel comfortable there. Two out. Keys at first and Brandon Loy at the plate. Nice block by Gibbs to prevent the runner from advancing to second base. Loy 0 for two lined out to right. Nice running catch by Mitchell in right center on that one and struck out. So Texas which saw that two run lead evaporate in the top of the inning comes right back to reclaim it in the bottom. Fastball. Three balls and a strike to Brandon Loy. Coleman, 20 of them total with four tonight. 25% of his home runs in one game. This was lined to right center. Mitchell won't run this one down. Keys on the way to third. They'll wave him. And now they hold him up. And a good decision because they got the relay throw back in. A double for Lloyd. Well, it's a nice job by Lloyd to take that ball the other way. You got a guy cross firing on it. He stays closed, drives that ball the other way. And Mata got a, a, a late jump on this ball, and so did Jared Mitchell. They're looking directly into the sun. So right now, Tommy Harmon's trying to see where that throw is. And that's a good job of holding him up. You're going to try and see if you can time it if you're the third base coach when that ball comes in that you're going to read the, the relay to the second baseman and it was a good relay so you hold him up. It was it was a good job of running but you don't want to run yourself out of that inning right there on an easy throw. That would have been an easy relay. Yeah LeMay you had it in plenty of time. It was a nasty hop that he was able to to pick up. Tomorrow we will be revealing the 2009 Lowe Senior Class Award. That award celebrates the loyalty of seniors that honor their four year commitment to their university. The Senior Class Award recognizes these student athletes for great achievement during competition and in the classroom while staying in school. Preston Clark stands in still looking for an RBI here. Down the left field line and that twists into the stands. It doesn't surprise me that Preston Clark hit that ball foul right there because he struck out on a sinker in. So he's probably anticipating that he might be pitching him in. He gets a little hanging breaking ball, and because he was opening up with the old pitch, the sinker in, the breaking ball he's out in front of and pulls it foul. If I'm Lewis Coleman, though, I'm pitching from the stretch here. Because I don't want the runner on second to get a bigger secondary lead on a base hit even though you're thinking negative that I want to hold him close with two outs at the crack of the bat. I might want to keep him close just to give my outfielders a little bit of a chance. Yeah well your outfielders are playing back so far no. there's going to be no chance. I mean you really the it, left it doesn't matter. Yeah it's just on comfort level because nobody's going to throw anybody out on a base hit. Now, Schimpf is only about three steps from the warning track. 
Yeah, any base guy. I mean, the, re really, right here, Coleman. He's just going to feed him a, a, a steady diet of sliders. I mean, th you know, that's your pitch. Don't get beat on on a second pitch trying to sneak a, a sinker in there. S stick with that same pitch, that slider on the outside corner. A ball and two strikes, and he hit him. No way! No way! No, they said it missed him, and a run home. Kevin Keyes scored from third. I thought it hit him in the back, but it went behind him. And now Paul Maneri is going to come out and argue. It'll be interesting to see was it a fastball that he overthrew or a breaking ball that came out the top of his hand because he's trying to throw such a good one. The target tells me it's a fastball, but I'll tell you what, that looks like a slider that just backed up on him. No, oh, that's a fastball. That, that's just I a, can't trying, imagine. Yeah, he's trying to run that in. I mean, you, you know, really, you have everybody on that slider away. Just make them get it. That ball certainly appeared to change trajectory. Well, if the reason that he lost the ball is because of the sweat he has, that's going to make the ball move a lot because the sweat dripping down, he loses the grip, and then it's like a spitter where the ball's really going to dart. But you think at least hit, hit his jersey. Yeah. Because that ball changed its trajectory. No, I think that one was completely behind him. I, I think you know what you what we've seen is when that ball goes behind, Gibbs gets a glove on it and at least deflects it, but it, it is behind him, and it becomes hard anytime you lose the anytime you lose sight of the ball. It be, it, it's a lot harder for for the fielder, catcher, or a fielder to be able to put your glove on it. Well, from the other angle. I know it hit the catcher's glove. But I think you can see it change spin change trajectory when it either hit him or the jersey. But it's a moot point now isn't it. And it's a 5 3 Texas lead. And that's the way it'll stand as Connor Rowe strikes out. The big blow of the inning. Moldenauer with his second home run. And Texas has the lead again. The Longhorns up 5 3. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One. ESPN College Baseball Analyst Kyle Peterson is on Twitter giving live updates on all the college baseball storylines throughout the championship. You can search ESPN College World Series on Facebook and become a fan to get behind the scenes access. You'll get video, trivia, polls, even discussions. And a new left fielder for defensive purposes, Tim Maitland. Goes into left to replace Preston Clark. And now seventh inning for LSU. Too hot to be pounding the beach ball around, isn't it? Derek Heleny, he will lead it off, chops it right up the middle. Boy, the shortstop. Very good shortstop as a freshman. Tomorrow night, the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One will continue 7 Eastern on ESPN LSU in Texas game two of the finals here at Rosenblatt Stadium and a reminder it is the best two out of three. Number nine man in the order is the shortstop Austin Nola and Daniel Bradshaw is up and warming just in case. For LSU. Just wonder if Lewis Coleman's night is done. I'm sure he's probably trying to talk his way back in there. Two and one to Nola, then we'll go back to the top of the order and DJ LeMayu. LSU finds itself down by two here to the Longhorns. 
who oh. played long ball against them. One solo shot after another. There's LeMayu. And Austin Nola has one of the hits off Texas pitching in this game. There's a strike. This is the one guy in the order you need to go after. He's the ninth hitter. He's the freshman. He's the shortstop for his glove. He's the only hitter in the lineup hitting below 280 at the start of the game, down around 240. Pulmonary thinks that as this young man matures and grows, he's going to be an offensive threat. He someday might be a three hitter on this team. But he sat the first month, month and a half, watched and learned. Pulmonary thought it was time to get him in the game and to improve the defense. And that's when uh, things started to turn around for them defensively and their record started to expand. Well, the changes he made, he thought were necessary, Pulmonary we're talking about, to get here to Omaha, to have a chance to win the College World Series. And he has uh, turned out to have second sight because those changes worked. And Nola is gone. Nola had been on the bench as a freshman, came in to play shortstop. LeMayu moved from short to second. One of the amazing statistics, they did not have a 6-4-3 double play at that point. Schimpf goes from second base to left, and Leon Landry lost his starting job. Yep. LeMayu 0 for 2 with the sacrifice. Still hitting 4-12 here in Omaha. Went to the second round in the draft of the Chicago Cubs. There's Skip Burtman, the longtime great coach of the LSU Tigers, now working basically as a fundraiser for the university. Well, that's where it all started right there. I, I remember playing against him in 1986. And, uh, you know, since then, even this crowd, everything that revolves around LSU baseball was, you know, essentially started by him. As nice a guy as you'll ever meet. Eight hundred and seventy wins and five championships here in eleven tries. And he just didn't win them. I mean, they came in here and steamrolled teams. Yeah, he was our pitching coach on the uh, 1988 Olympic team. There's Mrs. Burtman next to him. They were just, I mean, wonderful people. They were, they were traveling in 1988. We had the uh, Olympic team. He was our pitching coach, and what a what a great man. A very funny, just a, a fun coach to be around. Two and two to Lemayu spoils it, knocks it out of bounds. They've spent some time up here. They, I mean, they've been here the whole two weeks, and you know he might not make it through the whole game. Sometimes he'll he'll take off, go have a nice little dinner. You know, he's got a nice life right now. <laughs> no signs of leaving yet. This ball hit to straightaway center field. Connor Rowe going back, still going back in the wall, and it's gone. Lemayu, only four home runs all year. The most unlikely suspects are hitting it out at Rosenblatt tonight. Well, we've talked about how offensive this ballpark has been. This is a one handed swing stays behind it with his body rotates the hips through which continues the bat speed in the extension. But he pretty much hit that with his bottom hand and you could tell the wind is blowing out the center. Skip Berkman battling the heat and get out of here get out of her. Yeah. I'll tell you what he's seen some games here with some home <laughs> runs like that. That's why he's shaking his head. He's having a flashback. Tell you what they wouldn't have accepted a home yes, run when he was out here coaching that just barely yeah, cleared the fence. It would have been over the second wall. Yeah and really for these hitters all you really have to do is get a good tilt and put it on the barrel and, and that's really what's happening with a lot of these hitters. They're just putting it square on the barrel and it's carrying. And now Ryan Schimpf, who is their power, 22 home runs this year, including one as the second batter in this game, and is hitting a cool 500. 
There's been a seesaw of emotions in the last inning or so. LSU comes back and gets to Texas then gets to and their emotions go down and now it looks like two out nobody on LeMayhew up and they get a run. That's a huge swing in this game even though they're still down by one. That is only the third home run that the closer Austin Wood has given up in 83 and a third innings this year. Well, I think this is going to be the area where he's going to stay in. I think Augie Gree is going to keep him in the game. You're now going to have Shimp, Dean, and Gibbs coming up. Mitchell kind of looming further on down there, but you're going to see him finish this and the eighth. Shimp couldn't get around on a breaking pitch. He's gone, but a solo home run makes it a one run game. DJ LeMayu. The sophomore from Michigan unloads to dead center field. It's a 5-4 game. This place, this place is just inspiring. Rich with history and tradition. A shrine. The shining light and ultimate destination for so many. And so few. You see, Omaha is not just another stopover. Not just another spot on the map. It's a link to our past. And a clear path ahead. As time ticks away on this magnificent little place, it's not a time for sadness but a time for reflection. Because no matter at what location or on what hill, it's Omaha that makes the College World Series special. A big tip of the cap to our crew who put that together. Beautifully written, beautifully edited, beautifully voiced, and the essence of what the College World Series has meant to anybody who has ever been here or even watch it on television. It's just a magnificent place. I think one, you know, another thing that happens here is the people that work here are, are unbelievable as far as the the videos and all the things that go on. They give oh. kids a chance to dream about coming here, and that's part of it. Is that all these kids Isn't that it? come here, they see these great videos. These guys do hard work. They do unbelievable work. All these slow mos and everything. And you know not only the kids that are growing up in Little League watching this but also the college players they all see it and these guys do an amazing job for two weeks putting that on. That's the kind of thing you know that just uh, puts a little lump in your throat if it if you love baseball you can't help it and our crew every one of them loves baseball they come out here and they work hard I mean terribly hard. But they do it because they love what they're doing and they love this event and they love the sport. A lot of them use their seniority, been around to make sure they get this event. Well, I, I think, you know, for everybody that watches it, it, it makes this place, they make it special with, you know, the way they've shown it on TV and they get the emotion, they get the fans and you feel it. You feel energized by watching it. Connor Rowe facing Lewis Coleman. And you wonder how long Coleman can go with this kind of heat. There's action in the bullpen, and Connor Rowe is hoping to touch him up here. And hits it deep to left center field. Another solo home run for Texas. And that might do it for Lewis Coleman. Well, Connor you, Rowe, the number nine hitter in the lineup, hits his eighth home run. That's his second here in Omaha. They turned this into gorilla ball. Well, you admire Lewis Coleman's aggressiveness to keep attacking, but every one of the home runs is on a fastball. This is more of a day to try and trick hitters, keep the ball down, try and make them hit it on the ground. This is not a day to attack them and say strength against strength, see how far you can hit it because there's too much of an advantage for the hitter today when they get the ball in the air. Oh, absolutely. You know, really, he should be throwing his slider, painted on the outer half. Today's not a day to just challenge somebody with a fastball. We'll have a pitching change. Chad Jones coming on for LSU. 
Now time for our Coke Zero game track. If you joined us late, been a couple of surprises here because Texas has scored five of its six runs on solo home runs. Ruffin five and two thirds, five hits, three runs. Coleman went six plus but was touched with another solo home run here in the seventh and he's been replaced by Chad Jones who they actually found as a pitcher virtually by mistake Oral. And when he lost his playing time as an outfielder this is another football player but he's going to play on Sundays in the NFL defensive back for LSU. Jones will be moving to free safety this year. It's a more natural position for him. He finished the 2008 season at safety. He was moved to that position for the bowl contest against run oriented Georgia Tech played in all three 13 games started six including that win and in the tradition of LSU safeties he'll be about 240. Uh, he he was an outfitter lost time they really were impressed with his arm and said let's put him on the hill let's just see give him a side work he never faced a live hitter before he came into the game the first three hitters got on with walks then he struck out two guys in his first outing and they got him out of the game and a left handed reliever was born and he's got some good stuff. Missed with a fastball. Michael Torres the lefty and you've got Tucker a right handed bat belt and Moldenauer both lefties to follow fastball down toward first what a stop by Ochenko to the pitcher cover it. that's the way they play defense the entire College World Series but Chad Jones didn't exactly take the correct route to first base. Well I don't know if he was going over there to run over Michael Torres as he was going to first <laughs> base but you know one thing about being very athletic he falls at third base side and speed makes up for a lot of stuff and he goes right over there and you know not too many people are going to beat Chad Jones to first base. You know his arm is so good and breaking ball is so good here with very few reps as far as a baseball player on the mound that if anything ever happened to him football wise to his knees or lost his speed he could come back to baseball got a future you think I think so Travis Tucker goes after the first pitch hits it to straightaway center Mott took is there too quickly gone after the home run to keep up with all of the College World Series information you need just log on to NCAA.com it's the official online home for all of the NCAA championships 88 of them Tucker gone on one pitch now Brandon belt and belt is 0 for 3 and has only three hits here in the College World Series yes, he did. This young man has to feel fortunate even to be playing here the Super Regionals in the College World Series he was hit in the head during the regionals they had to take him to the hospital for some stitches in his ear. Oh, Got right. that peekaboo batting stance looking around the corner. What a day for home run power for Texas. Texas after the day tied again with LSU with 11 home runs whatever it takes yeah we don't have six solo home runs on that sign though. Augie Garrido pointed out the size of this ballpark and the fact that balls they're hitting here would end up about 10 feet short of the wall at home but they're getting out of this place. And especially today Robin you pointed out what a delightful hitters day this is with the conditions. Yeah it just makes hitting that much easier you don't have to try and muscle up you just put it on the barrel and let the conditions take care of it. Struck him out. Future indeed. Kids got an arm. 
Well, they force a pitching change as Connor Rowe hits the home run, but Chad Jones comes out of the bullpen to shut him down after that. The prestige and the expectations that go along with the University of Texas baseball program, it's almost like if you go you know, four years at, at, of college baseball here and don't get a World Series, it's almost like a failure. You know? It's in your job description. If you don't know where Omaha is and you don't take the team to Omaha, then you have fallen short of the minimum requirements. To be able to play at Texas, put on the uniform every day, something I want to remember the rest of my life. Longhorns have won six national championships. It's the second most in College World Series history. One more than LSU. They are sitting on five titles. This is the first appearance since 2005. And Augie Garrido with five national championships, three at Cal State Fullerton, two with Texas. And it's only the third time these schools have played at the College World Series. Well, you look back at the history of, of Texas with Cliff Gustafson. He was there 29 years. And I mean, really, the heyday of you know when ESPN first started covering it, and you know what a job and what teams he had. They were they were incredible. Blake Dean leads it off here in the eighth. Time getting short for LSU. They're down by a pair. The three, four, five hitters in this lineup to face Austin Wood. And they have not had a big day after exploding on the series through their first three ball games. Wood pours a fastball in there, three balls and a strike. Well, I wouldn't be surprised right here. You give him a take again. You, you know, you're going to get the same pitch 3 1, you're going to get 3 2. You have to try and get a guy on just to get the tying run to the plate. Two right handers oh. coming up next, and he missed low. So that'll bring the potential tying run to the plate. The last thing I expected was LSU's offense to go flat and they really haven't gone flat. They've scored four runs but facing a right hand starting pitcher coming in the day they were 36 and three and they've been pounding the ball in the first three games you see the three four high five hitters the middle of this order 16 for 40 12 RBIs but tonight they are a little flat. Well you are I mean you're going up against the number one staff in the country. Right. I mean it's not like they're facing guys that aren't very good. This is the number one ERA in the country and you know you're seeing why tonight. I mean they're taking a very potent offense and kind of taming it. Gibbs the switch hitting cleanup man turns around to the right side. Strike on the corner. Ma took on deck and then Jared Mitchell would follow. There's Mikey Matuk and Mitchell with that blinding speed behind him. This ball skied down the right field line. Kevin Keyes with room to make the play. One out. Check in with Kyle Peterson. Kyle. Thank you Mike. A couple innings ago when Mikey Matuk came off the field right after he had cramped up immediately went down into the clubhouse. Went to an IV, gave him the IV, and really was lucky for LSU that the inning took that long because it was until the end of the inning that he came running out. The minute it was, went right back out to his position in center field to look at him. Looked like it hadn't bothered him at all. Guys, they actually had reinforcements. Some guys from the fire department came down, brought him more needles just in case anybody else needed an IV. And that's when he cramped up after he chased that fly ball back near the wall, spun around a couple of times. Now he stands in in a huge spot right here with one on the one out in the eighth and his club down by two. Austin Wood the closer. Six wins 15 saves. Spent two seasons as a starter. And back in a closers role this year. He's been a terrific. Pitcher for the Texas Longhorns program. One and one. Ma took 
with a home run here in Omaha. Today, however, he has fanned three times. So he's looking for a little redemption. A freshman out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Strike on the corner. Well, if you're going to get that liberal strike out there, you're going to have to use that as a pitcher. And Austin Woods has not come inside. A, the ball is carrying the left field with the wind blowing out. B, you've got a right handed hitter that's trying to probably pull the ball to hit a home run. And so you've got an also C, a liberal outside corner. Grounded towards second, could be a double play. Tucker to Lloyd on to first. Four, six, three, and they get out of the inning. LSU now down to its last three outs. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Texas gets the double play to end the inning. They lead by two. It's pretty simple, really. You take the raw ingredients, shape them, mold them, create what's meant to be. Culmination of thought, planning, ability, strength, and heart. Put it all together, and you have a champion. And it's just six miles down the road from Rosenblatt, where the NCAA trophy is made. In fact, all of the NCAA trophies are made by MTM recognition here in Omaha. And one of these teams is going to get that trophy. Texas going to the bottom of the eighth. Moldenauer will be hit for Tant Shepard will come on. He and Moldenauer alternate the DH role on this club. And he will face the left hander. When Moldenauer sitting down in a dugout, sitting on a three for three night with two solo home runs. Got to be thinking, why are you hitting for me? I know it's a left hander, but why are you hitting for me? Haven't you been watching my at bats, <laughs> coach? He crushed the first ball. The second ball was a little bit win aided, kind of saw some spide spin, but he got a curtain call on both of them. And because of the pitching, or because of the uh, pinch hitter, LSU is going to make a move to the bullpen and bring in the right hander, Paul Bertasini. And Chad Jones certainly did his job in the last inning, but he will not get an opportunity to pitch to anyone here. Bertasini will come on. Aaron, how's the heat down there? Still, still bad? Oh yeah, <laughs> it hasn't gotten any better. And for all of you counting at home, Longhorns catcher Cameron Rupp, well, he's had three wardrobe changes already in this game. Uh, a couple innings ago, he was sitting on this uh, top step waiting for his jersey to come out of the dryer because he had absolutely soaked through the thing. He told me this is the hottest game that Texas has played in all year long. And basically mentioned yeah right after this I'm getting an IV to get ready for tomorrow mm. and what we're hearing from the grounds crew and everybody here is it's supposed to be hotter tomorrow guys so yeah more of the same and then some for tomorrow the weather had been uh, terrific up until now but uh, summer has set in in Omaha this is Bertasini the junior from Metairie 2 and 0 with three saves and he's on to pitch the bottom of the eighth. He'll face three right handers presumably. And now Lusson will come up as the pinch hitter for Tant Shepard. You come in from the bullpen you want to find your release point get used to the mound but you don't <laughs> really want to do this unless you're trying to upset the hitter that's coming up but he had a couple of those just a bit outside. Good luck digging in. Well right now they're trying to figure out how to get some dry balls out here. 
You can see they they have a problem with Tony Manners the, the sack that he's got hanging off the right right there. It's got all the baseballs and you know everybody's sweating. Obviously we heard of Cameron Rupp sweating but you, you know even as an umpire behind the plate you're sweating. And they just can't get uh, balls that you can get a good feel with. Well you just have a ball bag and in one dog out of the other you put the ball girl to watch the bag over there and just relay the balls and that's what they're going to do I think. Have her sit with the balls don't have them in a bag. Lusson will come on as the pinch hitter. As Bertasini comes in as the right handed pitcher Lusson is a switch hitter. I used to go through the ball bag before I'd pitch sometimes when it would come out because the bag is on the home side and I'd put the darker ones to the top and I tell the ball boy these go out when I'm pitching and the lighter ones I'd put at the off to the side and I'd say now you take those out ones the opposing oh. when my guys are hitting didn't miss a thing did he we've got another gray area well <laughs> we've got another gray area we're of, dealing with it's the home field advantage okay make sure you take the dark ones up to the umpire fill that bag when I'm pitching the light ones you go up because the skin takes the dirt at a different level and they sometimes they get a little lazy and don't rub it completely out. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'll just think about that for a moment. You're going to have you were my home team entire sometimes. pitching staffs going. OK well we got to go look at that <laughs> ball bag. I don't. Why wouldn't you just have two different ball bags. Because the umpires control the balls, you don't get to see them till the oh. game starts. So you have to go have your ball boy look at them as he takes them up and educate them on what's dark and what's light. What an education, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Lesson stands in against Bertasini, 317 on the senior on the season. This young man, another one of those uh, Texas quarterbacks playing baseball for the Texas Longhorns. They like those athletic guys. Lesson's brother Kyle is also on this team. Had him out in front. Well, Bertasini's best pitch is his changeup. He's got more strikeouts than innings pitch, but he has an excellent changeup. Nobody out, nobody on here in the bottom of the eighth, but Texas with a two run lead. Lusson only his second opportunity to hit here in the College World Series. That's a good one. That's being out in front. That's when you know the guy's got a really good changeup. And his changeup doesn't go come from the change in velocity as much as it comes from the great arm speed he has when he throws it. Because his fastball is sometimes only around 88, but that changeup there was only 83. So it's five mile an hour different, but it's a great arm action. Fastball missed and Lusson is aboard with a walk now it's time for our Pontiac game changing performance one solo home run after the other Tucker Moldenauer keys they just kept hitting home runs. Augie Garrido who was uh, we told you once said I would bunt Babe Ruth in this situation. Has not bunted tonight. Swing away, boys, and knock him out of here. Now might be a good time to lay one down. Well, I think that's exactly why he has Cameron Rupp even looking over at him. You just got to put doubt in the in the mind of the, the pitcher as he's coming to the plate. Maybe you get yourself a nice little pitch, but he's going to go ahead and continue to look and, and make them guess whether he's actually doing it or not. I don't know, you know, pitching wise, if that changes. Rupp with seven sacrifices this year. But he also is the leading home run hitter with 11. And showing no sign of a bunt and another breaking ball for a called strike. So the bunt is probably gone by the wayside here as far as options. Well, for sure he's in swing mode. And I'm not sure if Augie was thinking about immediately hitting him or seeing if Bertasini starts to throw strikes out there. Because you don't want to, if the pitcher's going to set the table for you by himself, you don't want to just bunt your way. And given out. 0 2 on breaking balls. Another one. 
Tap toward third. Helen Ehe on the run. Throws and got him. The runner advances to second. Well, any ball that's topped by a hitter as a third baseman, you're going to come in. You're going to make sure that you get a good handle on it. Helen Ehe does a nice job of coming in. Fielding this ball, it's topped right out in front of you. You know you have a catcher running, so you can take your time. It's not going to be a bare hand throw, so he goes ahead. He uses his glove instead of bare handing it, and he directs himself towards first base. He gets momentum going towards first base to get a solid throw off. Nothing that's going to sink, just a nice firm throw. At what point did you make a decision, I, I can go with the glove or I've got to go bare hand? As soon as you knew it was the catcher. <laughs> This one's popped into shallow left. Nola going out. Here comes the left fielder Schimpf. And he'll make the catch and Kevin Keyes is out. On the fly to left. Tomorrow night of course the College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One will continue at 7 Eastern on ESPN as LSU will face Texas. It's game two of the finals at Rosenblatt Stadium. The best two out of three and Texas right now. Only three outs away from claiming game one in this best two of three. Brandon Loy is on his shoulders now with a runner at second and two outs. Takes a called strike. Loy one for three. And 296 on the season. This young man was the Big 12 tournament MVP. Trying to bunt his way on. That's Youngman, the right hander. They were saying they would like to save Youngman to pitch tomorrow. But both coaches said this game's too important. We'll use whoever we have to use to win this thing. Hangs up and right for Mitchell. Looked dangerous for a moment. We'll go to the ninth. It's a two run game. Can LSU make a comeback against Texas? For LSU will face. Texas needing two to tie here in the ninth inning. Austin Wood, the closer, on in his third inning of relief, and he will face Jared, Jared Mitchell, presumably a young man who lit him up for a triple the first time he faced him, but Mitchell has not come out yet. Now it's Kyle Lusson going in to play right field. Very strong arm can play any of the outfield spots and Mitchell is indeed going to be the hitter. Wood with his 13 innings pitched in that 25 inning game. Since then he's gone nine and a third but given up 12 hits and seven runs. So he has not been as sharp after as he was before. Well, he was a team leader going into that outing and Augie Guerrero talked about the confidence he has now that has really grown that he can get out of any situation. Mitchell who we had seen struggle against left handers took one of the best left handers in the country. This closer Austin Wood and bashed one for a triple. Breaking pitch down. Was the triple off the fastball? It was a fastball. I'm not sure he even saw a breaking pitch in that at bat. Fastball away. Toward the shortstop. Nice play by Loy. Comes up and throws him out. One out in the LSU ninth. Our cap one player of the game. With two solo home runs is Russell Moldenauer. Three for three on the day. A tremendous performance. Congratulations. Young man who came into the game tonight hitting 233 through the season with one home run. 
Ball outside. Pretty good uh, time to step up, isn't it? Well, it's a time. <laughs> Any time is, but you know, especially when you're in the college world, you're finally in that first game of the of the series, and you get a day that's very offensive, and you know, put it together. Now this has got to be strange territory for LSU. They have not lost since May 20th. That was the first round of the SEC tournament, and they've got a base runner aboard as Sean Ochinko grounds through the hole to the left. Bottom part of this order, just trying to keep it alive and turn the lineup over. Derek Helenihi comes to the plate. 0 for 3, and Leon Landry, who will undoubtedly play in left field the next inning if there is one comes on as a pinch runner he's got a lot more speed than Ochinko and how far is Wood going to be able to go tomorrow night we'll be back with the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One 7 Eastern LSU in Texas game two the finals here at Rosenblatt Stadium. And that's it for Austin Wood. The closer is out of there. We'll check out the pitching change when we come back to the College World Series. This ball's launched to left center. Three solo home runs in the inning. Another solo home run for Texas. Now it gets interesting. We're in the ninth. The lead two for the Texas Longhorns. One out. A runner aboard and a new pitcher. Taylor Youngman is on for Austin Wood. What do we know about Youngman? Uh, Youngman is pretty good. He's a freshman who plays above his age, that's for sure, and he's lights out. Fastball 90 to 94 with a tremendous downhill angle. Big time college or high school basketball player. And he was asked by some of the media about, you know, do you have any fear? Are you confident coming into this situation? He goes, fear? You can't have fear and be a pitcher. You have to be confident. So he is strong emotionally and he, they talk about him the bigger the game the bigger he pitches. Well he was a uh, draft choice of the Dodgers out of high school. But like so many of these kids it's tough to tell where they evaluated his talent because he was taken in the 24th round. Most of these guys will put out the, the message hey I don't want to be drafted I want to go to college. And they draft them just in case something happens and they change their mind. Yeah, you, I mean, you're going to take a flyer on somebody, especially with a talent like Taylor Youngman. You're going to take a flyer, even though he said he wanted to go to school. You know, you, you just see maybe last minute you might want to sign. Or, you know, we'll still offer you the money that you normally would have gone in the round that you would have gone. But what a what a talent! I mean, he's coming here and you know and. Six innings, no hits or no runs, only three hits and six innings, and he's just so close to you as a hitter. He, you know, at six six, by the time he releases that ball, he's almost in the grass. Helen e, he has really struggled out here in Omaha. Takes that for a ball. He is 0 for three today, only one for 15 in the College World Series. Somebody always wears a collar out here, and you just you really feel for a guy. Who's had a really good year comes out here and nothing good happens for him, but he's ahead in the count two and zero against Taylor Youngman, and he represents the potential tying run at the plate. Tell you what, Texas has used two starting pitchers since they've been out here. Chance Ruffin, Taylor Youngman has not. Started yet, but they were thinking about starting him tomorrow, and then Cole Green. But Cole won't be ready for tomorrow, so this really 
is going to be interesting if they win this game what they ask Augie Garrido after the game who could be pitching tomorrow if they come back with Youngman. Oh. Fastball a little high three and oh Austin Nola is the scheduled hitter in the nine spot and you can see Augie getting just a little bit irritated with that three consecutive balls ball four now first and second occupied one out and we will have a pinch hitter for Nola Tyler Hanover will come on to hit for the light hitting shortstop and Hanover has already been a monster success here at the College World Series two for two a home run a double and three driven in that can't was, do any better it was against Arkansas he came in late got two hits that time he pinch hit for Helen Ehe, but here for Nola and he found lightning in a bottle against Arkansas we'll see what he can do here. Player of the year in North Carolina, he ends up at LSU. Well, one of the other things, you got a pitcher that's six six, you got a hitter that's five six. I mean, you get a guy that just walked a guy in four pitches, and now you got a five six zone to, to deal with with some power. And we were talking David and Goliath, LSU's offense against Texas. Well, here it's reversed as far as size. There's ball five. Hanover on Friday. Little guy turned on one and got it out. His fifth home run of the season. Somebody else who showed more power out here than you would expect during the regular season from his numbers. Well, Texas on the offensive side has done great things as far as the ninth inning. A walk-off walk, a walk-off home run. Youngman has yet to throw a strike. Low bridge, two and up. That'll get your attention. Well, right now you're just trying to get out of the way. I don't think he's he's swinging at anything right now, especially the ones that are just going to ride up and in. I mean, you know, as a hitter, you do, you want something immediately over the plate, but you know they're not even going to waste any time. They're going to go to the pin. Well, they said both coaches, anything we have to do, we will do. Youngman comes in, throws six consecutive balls out of the strike zone, walks one, goes to 2 and 0 on the pinch hitter, Tyler Hanover, and we'll have a pitching change. Austin DeSherry will be coming in. Boy, that's got to be a walk that hurts leaving now. Well, I mean, you're disappointed, but I mean, you know, he's got, he's going to be ready for tomorrow. So. You know, by taking him out Good right point. now, you're 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 lining him up that he, he's my guy tomorrow, and you know he, he'll give a full run at a full warm up and start the game. Well, he was two and zero, oh, hadn't got given up an earned run, only two walks in his six and a third inning pitch coming into this. But Austin DeSherry is their legitimate setup man. They kind of went out of order because they were playing the hot hand, but Austin has been the go-to guy in pressure situations. Late in the game before the savior comes in. So this is a little different as a freshman 6'4, 195. He's used to this situation. Well, he saved a game this year, 1 8 in 10 decisions and a terrific earn run average of 2.34. But what a situation he's coming into. It's a good thing he's used to pressure because he's facing it right now and he has the added liability. That he is facing a 2 0 count on the hitter. So yeah. he even has less margin for error. Yeah, especially, you know, you got a 2 0 count. You have a hitter that has a very small strike zone and with some power. So, you know, you, you can't be too careful. You got to give something where the umpire is going to automatically call that strike. You can't just sit there and try and pick a corner. You got a very small strike zone to hit, but, you know, as a pitcher, wh where do you go? Well you've got to go after him because 90 feet is huge in this situation a walk and then let a base hit tie the game compared to making an extra base hit hurt you. You try and go after this guy and also because you have a hot hitter on deck LSU's annex in the dugout right now they're trying to do 
anything to reel in the pitcher as a fish they think they're going to catch a big one right here. If you are Hanover are you going to take the first pitch or are you looking to hit something. Well I'm looking to go right after him with a strike because I've got a hot hitter on deck. LeMahieu hit a home run in his last at bat. He's very confident coming to the plate so I don't want to see him with bases loaded and one out. I got to go after this guy and go strength against strength until I get to a count maybe 2 2 where I can challenge him with my breaking ball trying to really get him out. This LSU team has the best record in baseball. They brim with confidence. That was ball three and he chased it. Well that's the part about being aggressive. It's it's odd as a hitter when in the middle of your at bat they change pitchers because now you're trying to pick up a different release point and this balls up and he, he you know he's being aggressive but again like Oral said 90 feet is a lot more important right now than trying to just jump the gate. Well what a hold to Sherry would have felt like he was in if that pitch is taken because it's ball three and he's only got you know he's really got his back up against the wall to load the bases. I don't mind him swinging at a tool fastball. I, I have a problem when it's shoulder high. You got to keyhole somebody. Hanover helped him. Off speed pitch for strike two. And that swinging at the 2 0 pitch, that first pitch, allows DeSherry to throw this pitch right here because there's no way at 3 0 that he's going to throw that pitch. He's probably going to have to throw two fastballs in a row. So you really put yourself in a hole as a hitter to swing at that pitch that's above your waist. 2 2 to Sherry. Oh. High fastball. The count is full. Well, Hanover's got to remember he's a singles hitter. He's got to remember his role. He's had a home run here at the College World Series. He's hit it. It was a breaking ball that was hung inside. His role is to get on base or get a base hit to right field. Payoff pitch coming. I mean, the last thing you want to see sometimes is have a little guy hit a home run and then come out of his game for a week to 10 days. That's when you see a slump. You have to stay in your game and be surprised by the long ball. Would you even think about starting the run? No. Good thing. Struck him out. Uh, the big pitch in that about the one uh, in that at bat, the one that they will be talking about tomorrow was 2 0. The first pitch that Austin DeSherry came in and threw well out of the strike zone. He went after it and fouled it back instead of ball three. It's 2 and 1. Well, like Oral said, you know, a guy's trying to come out of his shell and trying to hit for power. Right there, you still got to take the ball the other way. You, you're still trying to build and get base hits. Let somebody else that's, you know, Obviously have more bats that's more of a home run hitter do that but knock some in the outfield get some guys running around the infield you just can't rely on trying to hit a home run. DJ LeMayu the third last time up he homer he is one for three fastball line down the left field line into the corner and it's fair two runs are going to score and it's tied LeMayu comes through. Holy cow, what an at bat! Is that clutch? Huge clutch. You go from a batter that tries to do too much to a hitter who understands what he's doing. He learned so much in the on deck circle what this young man's out pitch is on the mound. He looked for it, and even out in front, he still hit it. His home run that he hit was with one hand on a fastball away, a low ball hitter. He gets a changeup, and he lets the LSU Tigers roll on the bases. Tim Maitland didn't have a chance. That ball is perfectly placed down in the left field corner. Now Ryan Schimpf, the most dangerous hitter they have, is going to be walked intentionally to put runners on first and second. And Blake Dean will have a chance to hit in that situation. Will we see another pitching change? What a game this is. Well, I think we are going to see another uh, pitching change. You got Blake Dean on deck. You got a side armor lefty in the pin. I mean, this is when you're just you're, you're throwing everything you got. Anybody that's in that pin that's got a heartbeat, you're going to be going in this in this game, trying to just make it through one inning. Texas very short as far as left-handers are concerned, but Shinneberry is down there and apparently ready to go. Well, if you don't live in Louisiana and you don't live in Texas, get on the phone and call your friends because those two states are watching for sure. This is some kind of game. 
Palmineri knows how good his club is. He knows he's got a legitimate shot to win the College World Series this year and fill the hole on his resume. No pitching change. And Blake Dean stands in. A base hit and a walk tonight. Foul outside first. Well, last year, you know, LSU was playing against Rice and Cole St. Clair, a very good closer for Rice, came in the game. Blake Dean hit a ball in the left center off the left center wall, left field wall. Two runs came in. They end up winning that game. So he's into these pressure situations. He is able to go the other way. He's not just a pull hitter. He has been their best hitter for three years. Hit the straightaway center. Connor Rowe with room gets there. But LSU gets two. And they tied it in the top of the ninth. What a tremendous clutch hit. DJ LeMayu with the double drives in two. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth. Baseball is a game of unlimited possibilities. Arizona State, three outs away now from extending their season to tomorrow. You know, I was frustrated, of course, but Maki came and told me after I got the ball that they were going to score and pick me up. Way back, it is gone! I knew it when I hit it. I mean, the feeling was unbelievable. Right when I stepped in, kind of went to a different mode. Like, I couldn't hear anything in my head. Connor Rowe drives one to left, back at the wall. Wins. The next thing I remember was looking in the stands when we were walking off. So that was the biggest baseball moment of my life. Here's what the Longhorns have done. They have come behind from behind repeatedly to win in the ninth. These three in the bottom of the ninth. They had a walk off grand slam against Army. They beat Southern Miss by one, Arizona State by one. So they're used to this. Well, Matty Ott, when he's been in a game here at the College World Series that matters, he's done well. He has an ERA of 16 while he's been here because he hadn't pitched since game one in the other two games the third game they brought him in they needed to get him some work and as a typical closer that comes in in a non adrenaline situation he gave up some runs. Got some changes defensively Leon Landry will come in to play left field. LeMayu moves over to shortstop as Nola was lifted for a pinch hitter. Hanover who was a pinch hitter comes in to play second base and Ryan Schimp Schimp excuse me moves from left field to first base and Ochinko is out. Eight nine and one in the batting order for the Texas Longhorns. All they need is a run to win it. But they'll be facing Matty Ott. Tim Maitland will lead it off. Ott has an inflated LSU because uh, uh, an inflated ERA because he came in for LSU the other night. In a non save situation, as we've seen so many times, the closer comes in, and if the game isn't on the line, the juice just isn't there for these guys. They need that adrenaline rush. They love the pressure, and that's why they end up with the job. But sometimes, when it's a relaxing, just get some work, it just takes the edge off everything. Well, he's got it now and pours a fastball in there against Tim Maitland. Augie Garrido said a world of possibilities and we sure had him tonight. 
strike two call. Just a 200 hitter is Tim Maitland. You gotta imagine this is the biggest at bat of his season. Yeah, anytime you're coming up. Anytime you're coming up, you, you get a situation, you haven't had that many at bats, but now you're, you're you're coming, you can win the game with one swing of your bat. It's it's hard to control those emotions to just think of getting a base hit, but what a what a spot to be put in. There might be some aluminum shavings coming off of that handle right now. Ball and two strikes from Matty Ott to Tim Maitland. Hit him. Maitland was going to take one for the club. He didn't move an inch. Not only did he not move an inch, he actually leaned into it with his knee, put the flex in his knee a little greater to have this breaking ball hit him. You see him turn back into it. That's on a one two count. Hit by an inside breaking ball. That's why it's so tough to be a coach. Outside the box. How do you hit a guy on a one two pitch? Well, usually you hit him in the back foot because you're trying to get the swing and the miss, throw the slider as a right hander down the middle, swing it and throw it at their back okay. foot, but that front foot is really an overthrown pulled breaking ball. Row to sacrifice. Very I nice. It. I got it. Got it down perfectly to get Maitland into second base. Well, this team, obviously, with the amount of sacrifice they've had over the course of the year, they just know how to bunt. Push that thing to first base. You have a new first baseman over there. Make sure you get him in the game. See if they put the pressure on them to make the play. Well, now they have reverted to what they have done so well all year long play small ball. They get a runner on, hit by a pitch. They sacrifice him over. And now Torres with the single would have a chance to drive in the run. They led the NCAA the entire country with 103 sacrifice bunts. When you've got a team with a big ballpark and you can't hit it out, this is the way you got to play. Torres, one for four tonight. One driven in in the College World Series. His second would be huge. Fouled out of play. Yeah, we seen how Texas had their outfielders all the way back, you know, fighting against the guarding against the the extra base hit. Now LSU's got to bring them in. It opens up some gaps just so, just so they have a throw to home plate to be able to get the runner at home. You've got to be at that spot where you're convinced you can throw somebody out, not just. A chance, but convinced that you've got the arm from that spot to throw him out on a base hit. And that leaves a lot of room behind you. There's a lot of, especially where the ball's carrying tonight, there is a lot of room and, and you're going to have to run it down. You can't just, you know, pick it up. You are going to, you are going to have to catch it. If Torres gets something up in the air, it could be interesting. Okay. Fouled out of play again. Well, in the infield, you, you're going to have to keep this ball in the infield. So you see Derek Helenihi at, at third base. He has to be far enough back, even though you know any ball cued off, you're not going to be able to get him anyway. You're just guarding to keep that ball in the infield. You might not get the guy at first, but you got to keep it in the infield. One and two to Torres. Tap foul again. Boys, as a hitter, you up there thinking, okay, I'll just keep fouling them off till I get something I can. I can hit hard somewhere. Well, this is the best part for a hitter is you don't have to hit a home run. All you feel like, especially on a hitter's night, you know, where you're feeling very offensive as a team, you just have to get a base hit. So you don't have to overswing. Oh. Missed outside, two and two. Of course, the LSU crowd wanted it. Now 
Maitland at second with the winning run. Ball three. Of course, Torres' run is meaningless if you walk him. And it sets up a force, so maybe it's not a bad idea. I don't know if you're really playing for a double play, but I mean, you know, that is the one thing that does happen if you just throw your pitch and set up a double play. Sky to left, Landry with room. Step short of the track, and Maitland retreats to second base. Back in the fourth inning, Travis Tucker. One of the Texas home runs. The little guy turned on it. Hit his third of the season. Doesn't need a home run here, as Robin said. Anything with base hit written on it wins the game. Runner at second, now two out. Tucker has been an offensive spark plug for this club all year long. This is in the air, should be caught. Matuk will make the catch. We'll go to the 10th. 6 6 LSU and Texas. Go to the tenth and a whale of a ball game tied up between two of the best teams in the country, LSU and Texas, tied at six. It is a best two out of three championship series here in Omaha. This is the first one, and it has been a beauty so far. Oh, this is, <laughs> I mean, it is nothing like anybody expected. All the home runs are coming from Texas, That's and right. we had a little small ball right there from LSU. And DJ LeMayhew, unbelievable. He gets the home run solo shot with two outs, nobody on after they had just given up two, and then he comes back out with a two-out double to tie the game. So he's gotten clutch hits all the way through. First extra inning game in a College World Series final goes back to 2003 when Rice beat Stanford. It doesn't look right now like momentum is favoring either team. It looks like as we go into extra innings, it's still a toss up. Well, the first runner in scoring position is going to be the momentum. Yeah, for sure. Austin DeSherry working to Micah Gibbs. Four, five, six in LSU's order here in the 10th. Gibbs with a single tonight in four trips. Oh. Texas's bullpen's having trouble throwing strikes. Oh. They look like they're overthrowing a little bit, over trying. And all you Garrido not going to have a very slow hook with anybody. No. He took Taylor Youngman out after six pitches. Ball four. Walked him on four pitches. You're watching the College World Series from Omaha, presented by Capital One, LSU, and Texas. It is the first game of a best of three championship series. Two storied programs locked up in a beautiful, beautiful ball game. 6 6 in the 10th. Gibbs is on for Mata. Well, this is a delay visit to allow the bullpen to get hot. Remember, they took out one reliever here in mid count. Brandon Workman down there getting ready. 
in the bullpen. But Texas was a beneficiary of poor strike throwing by Southern Mississippi. Walk, walk, hit batter, walk. They had a walk off win against Southern Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, and one of the things as an offense, you have to be patient enough to let the, the pitching get into trouble. I mean, if you get too aggressive offensively, you're going to help them out. They can't throw strikes. That's too bad. You, you just let them keep throwing balls. Well, we take you back to the uh, meeting this morning with both head coaches, and they both talked about they thought this was such a critical game for different reasons. But they are determined to play this game as if it was not game one, but game three. And then let the chips fall where it may in game two and game three. I've never seen the old change the belt for a delay, though. That, that one's. Boy, now the crowd. That one sounds like it's the gray area that Oral was <laughs> mixing in earlier. <laughs> This is a uh, very crafty move if it was necessary. Yeah, I haven't noticed the old belt change trick since we got here. That's a new one. Put that in Oral's bag of tricks. Now I did get some dirt in my eye once that I can remember there wasn't any dirt in my eye. Okay. But I've uh, never seen the change of the belt. Well, apparently it was legitimate. See, Oral's not teaching everybody all those tricks. This <laughs> is legit. I just got this from the Longhorns equipment manager. <laughs> now, if it only had a fan and a spritzer. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, 930? It's only 107 degrees. It's fine. Hang in there, Aaron. <laughs> Tough night for Matuk. Fan three times, grounded into a double play, so he is 0 for 4. But already has five hits in the College World Series, including a homer. And he took an IV for cramps. So that tape around his arm there is from the IV. Gibbs down at first to catcher, not a great deal of speed. Mott took squares to bunt, pulls the bat back. One of the harder things to do is to throw strikes after you've lost your release point or you don't have it this inning and then as you come into your line of vision you see a guy squaring the bunt. Because the one thing you're trying to do is pick up the target and get some rhythm and now the hitter gets in the way of half of what you're concentrating on. Swings away on this one. Well, I think that's a case right there. Paul Maneri just trying to get him a pitch. You know, he squared around the first pitch. Now he's trying to get him a cookie right there and, and lets him swing away. It gives him one shot at it. Do you go back to the bunt? I think you need to. You need a guy in scoring position right now. And if you're DeSherry, you want to take the out or do you want to try to make it as hard as possible for him to get the bunt down? Pulls the bat back two balls and a strike. Now the wheels are turning. Well, for me, if you're going to put a hit and run on, you make sure the pitcher throws strikes. For me, if you're going to green light a hitter or move the bunt off, I got to have a pitcher that's throwing strikes. And this guy has not been in the strike zone at all this inning. So it's two things you're looking for the cookie, but it's got to be capable of throwing it. That's a fastball down the middle with the runner going. But now it's two and two. Pulmonary is doing everything right here. We put the bun on first pitch, get a ball. Okay, maybe we get a fastball for sure with a dead fastball hitter. We swing at a ball. Now we get another ball, and then we get back in the count two and one, and we're going to put the hit and run on. So he's empty in the bag of tricks. And you've still got nobody out and a runner at first. Now a two-two count. That's outside, but hit through the hole. Gibbs the catcher. Will have to stay at second base. What execution by Ma took. Well, this is just a ball that's out of the zone, and he's protecting with two strikes and gets lucky that he's got that open side of the field over there. You got the first baseman holding it. Not a very good swing, and he just gets lucky that he hits it in the right spot at the right time with Gibbs on first base. 
It just hits right in that hole, not, you know, no man's land right in there, but he's protecting, not wanting to strike out and gets gets away with it by hitting it in the other way. There's a big hole over there. You got to be able to use it. Now do you use Mitchell to sacrifice. You would think you'd have to first and second nobody out swing away. Well the thing that you might swing away here is because Mitchell has such great speed that he probably will not ground in a double play. You want him to hit the ball on the ground here. You don't want him to hit it in the air. Well you are going to have to hit it to the right side of the field to get Gibbs over if you right. are going to hit it in the air or want. even on the ground and he just kills right hand. Oh. I mean he gets great cuts makes tremendous contact and against right handers we've seen him hit nothing but line drives and Mitchell has not grounded into a double play this year so 358 versus righties and no double plays and again you got the outfield playing so far back that any base hits going to score Gibbs on a single he might line into a double play but he may never ground into one. Two balls and a strike to Jared Mitchell out of New Iberia, Louisiana. Trying to make the whole state stand up and cheer. Big cut and he missed. First round draft choice of the White Sox. Leon Landry's first at bat of the game. Hit to deep right but playable. The catcher tags on his way to third. And he'll get in there. Well, this is a worst case scenario if you're LSU. You get Jared Mitchell that goes in and he pulls the ball to the right side, allows Micah Gibbs to get the third base. A nice piece of hitting just to get that guy in the scoring position. They are back at second and short. For Leon Landry, a 301 hitter. Missed with a changeup. Hometown product from Baton Rouge. 0 for 2 in the College World Series. Got a chance to be a hero. It's a young man who was a starter in the outfield, lost his job, has handled it like a pro. Leon Landry left handed hitter Austin DeSherry's out pitch is a plus plus change up with the man on first that's a huge hole because he'll be out in front in the dirt block but it will allow Mott took to take second base so the double play is no longer in order and you'll have to bring the infield in and that's going to add 100 points to the batting average of Leon Landry he is now a 401 hitter. That was a good block saving the run on third. It's a bad block as far as keeping it in front of you. you. Got off to the side. A tough ball to read for the man on third when the ball goes away from you like that. You want it to go sideways and then you can read the distance. When it's slightly backwards and off the side, very hard to know how far that got from the catcher. Well, they're not going to take a chance here. Cameron Rupp puts out the sign that they want to walk him so that they'll have a force play. Oh, Everywhere, and that'll bring Helen Ehe back to the plate. But now, a baseball hitting the gap can break this open. This is the top of the tenth. This is not a situation where all you're playing is for one run. Helen Ehe, 0 for 3, he walked. 
We've got a pitching change. We'll be back in just a moment. Six six in the tenth in the Texas Longhorns working their way through the entire pitching staff. Here as we're in the tenth with the bases loaded and only one out Brandon Workman the new pitcher out of Bowie Texas had a no hitter against Penn State earlier in this year and that's what he's in there to do he can't afford to give up a hit. Well if you're thinking strikeout look at those innings pitch and strikeout averaging more than one an inning he's the hardest thrower on the Texas Longhorn staff that led the nation in ERA he can touch 96 miles an hour. But he can be wild and he doesn't have any room for any more base runners. And Helene, he what a time for him if he could break out of his slump. He's one for 15 here in Omaha. Oh, for his last 12. The game finds you, doesn't it? <laughs> It always found a fielder. Anytime you put a yeah. fielder out there, there, you were sure to get a ball hit to you. Finds hitters yeah. too. It'll find hitters. It'll find pitchers. You, all of a sudden, you find yourself in yeah. bases loaded. It finds everybody. It's a, at the core of it, a heartless game. Derek yeah. Helenihi from Livermore, California. Fastball called strike. Tyler Hanover hoping for a chance to hit. Jammed him with a fastball, fouled out of play. 0 oh 2. Quickly workman ahead. Two pitches, high fastball or breaking ball in the dirt. Which one is he going to go with? Oh. A fastball that was nearly airmailed to the backstop. Cameron Rupp, nice job to get out and spear a 97 mile an hour fastball. Two and two. You know, think about it. Cameron Rupp's back there in the tenth inning of catching in 107 degree heat. Spring out of his legs at this point. That was a heck of a stop. Foul back. Well, Workman isn't kidding around. No, this I, is good old fashioned country hardball. No, yeah, that's exactly it. He's just ran back. If you're Helen Nehe, you can almost put away the breaking ball in your mind. I mean, Oral was talking about earlier that breaking ball in the dirt. If he hasn't thrown it yet, yeah, you got to be looking for that uh, that fastball. Be a heck of a time though, wouldn't it? Fastball foul away again. And the more he's up there seeing those fastballs, the better his timing is going to get. I mean, he's getting a little more on it each time, and the advantage starts switching back to that hitter, even though he is throwing 96, 97. Derek Helene he against Brandon Workman. There's the curveball. What a time to throw a hook, and he did exactly what you said in the dirt. How's that for pitch selection? Well, you can get rid of the curveball in your head as a hitter, but as a pitcher, you know you have a wide range to miss with it. And he throws this like a high fastball when it's out of his hand, so it starts the bat, and it doesn't have to be for a called strike. Because you threw it out of the correct window. If he'd have thrown that curveball at the hitter and then tried to get a called strike, he doesn't get that swing. Strike call to Tyler Hanover. Now two outs. The base is still loaded. I don't know how you could have much more pressure in the opening game of a best of three. Just got a piece. Defensive swing by the 5 6 freshman.
top of the 10th for LSU Texas trying to hold them so they'd have a chance to win it in the bottom of the 10th. Got him to chase and struck him out. They're going to have to make a play and they do at the plate. What a job by Brandon Workman. Comes in and gets consecutive strikeouts to get out of a bases loaded jam in the 10th. We're still tied at six. Six six as we go to the bottom of the tenth. LSU and Texas, a game that has been a seesaw battle since we began, and a game just chock full of solo home runs, most of them by Texas. I mean, a stunning turnaround for the Texas Longhorns here at the College World Series, showing that power. A little bit of reverse of what we saw earlier, because LSU was the power team, and Texas with the small ball team, but with the wind blowing out. Augie Garrido trying to let his guys free up the bat accurate and fast and they've been taking a ride on the wind. Bottom of the tenth you looking for somebody to play small ball again like Augie Garrido has all year and oh, try absolutely. to manufacture a run. Yeah anybody gets on you're going to be seeing some guys bunting some people over getting them just get them in the scoring position give yourself a chance to bloop one in for a win. They'll have the four five six men in the order facing the closer Matty Ott. Every one of these Texas home runs has been of the solo variety. And most of these balls were really cream. Well, Robin talked about how you lose tension in your hands when you are not trying to hit for power or, you know, grunting to get it out like their big ballpark. So they're relaxed here and they're being rewarded. And a quick hands are light hands and they're also more accurate. Augie Garrido calling his kids together. The seven home runs combined, all of the solo variety, and that's a College World Series record. Brandon Belt will lead it off. Belt is 0 for 4. He is not joined in the home run parade. Hit eight on the season and 42 driven in takes that one low. Nobody warming up for LSU. It's on Matty Ott's shoulders, the closer. Inside the belt, 2 0. Oh. That one comes back over the inside part of the plate. Two balls and a strike. Ott's got a lot of run on that pitch. That one runs outside. Brandon Belt trying to get on board any way he can. Right at the second baseman. Hanover will throw him out. One gone. You know, Matty Ott on the mound, the reason he is the closer is because he stepped up. Lewis Coleman, the starting pitcher for the night, was supposed to be the closer for the Tigers this year. But Lewis Coleman was given his first start at New Alex Box Stadium. Matty Ott closed the game and he became the closer, set the all time record for saves in a year for the Tigers this year as a freshman and deepened their rotation by letting Coleman stay as a starter. Kevin Lusson who walked his first time up skies it to center. Matuk makes the catch too quickly down here in the Texas 10th inning. And now Cameron Rupp who had that dramatic home run in the bottom of the ninth to tie Arizona State the other night comes up. He has had no hitting luck tonight. Yeah. 
You're looking for a pitch to drive right away, two out, go win the game. Yeah, so I mean he's first he's pitch been, fastball. Yeah, he's been catching all night. You know, probably not feeling that great, very dehydrated. But get yourself a fastball, and you know he is the strongest kid on their team. 11 home runs 45 driven in this year. Those are big numbers for a Texas ball club that hasn't scored that many runs hasn't hit that many homers. And now a visit to Matty Ott with a 1 0 count. To Cameron Rupp. Take you back to Friday. Bottom of the ninth. His team down by a run. And he unloads to dead center field. That was over the second wall, so he got all of that one. And set up a walk-off home run situation. And Texas won. So you saw that that was a high fastball. This is a high fastball hitter. Plus what Robin said about he's tired and probably not feeling that well and when hitters legs are tired they come off of low pitches they come up as they swing because they come out of their legs because they're tired so you want to keep the ball down and you want to try and make it hit it on the ground tough on the home plate umpire to work a game like this too okay. hot missed with a breaking pitch outside. Two and oh to Cameron Rupp here in the tenth. Fastball for a called strike. Every pitch is just sort of lean forward in your seat. Missed. Three balls and a strike to Rupp, who has home run power. Mattiot has allowed seven this year, including one here in Omaha. That one's on the edge of the black. Three and two. A lesson on deck only has four extra base hits all year and 41 at bats. No home runs. The other four, four extra base hits are doubles. That's why they're pitching this guy so tough. Tried to check his swing and did. It's a walk with two outs. You get a tough slider on the outer half, and Cameron Rupp holds up. Perry Costello agrees, calls it a ball. Here's Kyle Lusson. Who came on for keys. Couldn't catch up to a fastball. Lesson in limited at bats, only 46 official trips to the plate. Hit only 174 this year. Oh. Never made an error in high school playing center field. How about that? Last thing you want is a two out double. Guarding the lines and outfield deep. Oh. That's too low. Lesson reaches. Brandon Loy would be next. You want pressure? Put a kid up with 46 at bats all year long in the bottom of the tenth with a chance to win a ball game in the College World Series. That's on the corner. You don't think his heart rate's up a little bit? <laughs> well, I'm not giving him a breaking ball to make a mistake with to give him more power. I'm going to throw him a fastball away and make him beat me over there. Struck him out. Matty up. Lesson is gone, and the gritty closer for LSU survives another inning. We go to the 11th.
great great ball game as we go to the 11th inning tied at six LSU in Texas. Game one of the best of three here is our game recap for you five solo home runs by the Texas Longhorns tonight. But in the ninth DJ LeMayu ties it with a two run double with two outs a clutch hit that made it six six and that's where we are right now in the 11th inning and LeMayu will lead it off for LSU here in the top of the 11th facing Brandon Workman. Both coaches went with uh, strategic moves late to get pinch hitters in there. Now their benches are incredibly thin with guys that they would like to see up in a pressure situation or guys that uh, they want to send out to play defense. Well, there's so many subplots that affect the rest of the series because of how many pitchers they might have to use. And the depth of your pitching staff could turn out to be the telltale sign of who wins the national championship. Top of the order here, LeMayu with two hits. When in some years you could get by with two hot starters and a closer and a good solid offense and defense, you may need a whole pitching staff to get through these three days because we're in the 11th. High heat. Well, you just see LeMayu after that swing looking out toward the mound like, okay, all right, I, I got you. I see what you got. Fouls this one off. And I'm sure Workman was returning the look like, yep, come get some. Yeah, it's all 97 right here. <laughs> What do you do when you've been facing 88 and all of a sudden it's 97? Is there an adjustment as oh, a hitter? Absolutely. I mean, it, when you haven't seen this kind of velocity, it just, it just, you got to turn it up a notch. Oh. Breaking pitch hangs up there. You swing harder? No, actually, especially at night like tonight, you don't swing harder. You, you're just trying to be quicker. You're just trying to see it and be quick because the conditions are going to work for you. 2 2, another breaking ball laid off, and it's a full count. Bill Madlock used to tell me slow hands or slow feet quick hands. Absolutely. So you, you see the ball better and then the quick hands. Payoff pitch to LeMayu leading off the LSU 11th. High fastball chased it and got a piece. Well that's what velocity does for you right there. You get a lot of guys swinging at the ball up. It's just a, a ball that jumps out of his hand and it keeps rising as it gets there. But as a hitter you're trying to protect. You know, with, with two strikes, you got to protect. Oh, Missed with a fastball. A walk to LeMayu. The lead run aboard with nobody out. If you joined us late, you have missed a beauty. 6 6 between LSU and Texas. In the first game of the best two out of three for a national championship, two teams, two schools, a very used to playing for a national championship. Schimpf intentionally walked the last time up. He had a homer way back in the first, the second man to hit, and homer to straightaway center field. And this kid is a terrific hitter. Fifth round draft choice of the Blue Jays. Pops this one up on the infield. Brandon Loy for the first out. Well, the way you've been swinging the bat all tournament, Chevy gets the green light, and it's just a ball right down the middle, tails away, pulls off it, and knows he missed one. LSU has gotten their leadoff hitter on in the fifth, the eighth, and the tenth via a walk, and Texas has avoided that bump every time. Here again in the eleventh, a walk leads it off. Blake Dean, 17 home runs. Gets this one up deep to left, but probably not deep enough. Maitland will make the catch, and that's two outs. 
Little different wind right now. And let's say it's just blown straight down. It's gotten calm here as the night has cooled off. Earlier, that could have been a home run. I think right now the, the breaking ball really come, should come into the mind of LeMahieu at first base. Any ball that's thrown down in the dirt that's going to bounce, that's the one he's been throwing. You got to make your way to second base. Micah Gibbs with two out and a runner at first. The runner goes to throw. Not nearly in time. Gets through into center field. LeMahieu is on his way to third. He'll make it standing up. Not a good throw by Cameron Ruff. It was tailing towards center field. Or tailing toward the right side of second base, excuse me. Scoring will probably be a stolen base and an error on the catcher. And it is. He gets a good jump, almost going on first move. And there's that fatigue from playing, being the catcher for 107 degree heat here. Coming up, just a little weak. One ball, no strikes. Fastball fouled away. Now, are you worried about throwing that breaking ball in the dirt with a runner at third? Well, he threw it with bases loaded to the first hitter after not throwing it for four or five pitches. And he threw a great one right down the middle. But you're always worried. His breaking ball is so sharp and he throws so hard that you could get a bad hop on it. Oh. High fastball, 92 on the gun. The lead run at third. DJ LeMayu, who started the inning off with a walk. Brandon Workman trying to get out of a jam here in the 11th misses again. The book on Workman can be wild. We see when he is in the zone he has overpowering stuff. But he's already walked one in this inning. Matuk would be next. Another dangerous hitter. That's high. Two walks and Ma took to the point. One for five tonight with a single workman. You see, has already thrown 24 pitches. And he wants to talk. There's nobody working in the Texas bullpen or LSU for that matter. At some point, you've got to say, okay, game's yours. That's it. We burned enough guys. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he comes out and gets out of a, a bases loaded jam with one out. I mean, you, you, you know, you don't know if fatigue with the heat is, is really becoming a factor right here. But, you know, if he can get out of that, you're going to give him a chance to get out of this. Keith Shinneberry is up, the left hander who was warming earlier. I don't necessarily take the last walk by Workman as wildness as much as it's a right handed pitcher against a left handed batter and Mikey Matuk is coming up who's right handed. So he was probably pitching him very tough and when he pitches tough I would think that his misses would be high not somebody who's trying to paint the corners and go in and out. He's a high fastball curveball pitcher. Matuk out of Lafayette Louisiana fastball called strike. LSU keeps threatening Texas keeps turning them away. Swing and a miss on another fastball. That looked like a muscle up swing to me that bat was slow coming through the strike zone it looked like he was trying too hard and gripping it too tight. Mott took in the dressing room earlier for an IV and boy was he late on that swing. Remember how in between he was in his last at bat it was 2 2 and it was a high and away fastball almost in the left hand hitters matters box and he was just barely going after it. and he's still like very in between with his timing and his rhythm. Well that was an emergency swing there. Oh. Missed outside. If you've got a death grip on that bat you can't get it through the zone. I am not throwing that pitch right there because this hitter is so far behind my fastball. I am not going to turn the field for him by minimizing velocity and let him bring the ball back in fair territory. One and two. Fastball fouled away again. Much better swing at that one. 
He's gotten a base hit to right on an emergency swing. He's fouling off high and away fastballs. I don't want to throw a breaking ball. What's the other pitch? Fastball in. It increases the velocity and it jams him and it might beat him. And I don't care if I hit him. Time called. And this is a place to throw a fastball in. Because you don't need a called strike. It's one and two. I don't want to get to two and two or three and two where I need a called strike and you get more of those away. This is a time to throw a fastball in. Breaking pitch hit the center field. LSU takes the lead. And Oral, I think you're absolutely right. If you can't handle the fastball, why do you give them a breaking pitch? Well, it just speeds up, you know, for the hitter, it just speeds up the bat. You're way behind it. You're fouling everything over the first base dugout. And he ha he also has no stride. If you look at him, he's just, he's already set by the time the pitcher throws. So you're really giving him the advantage of seeing this ball all the way there. You can see how much he would have been behind a fastball, but he's all over it. And it, uh, just a nice job of hitting him, fouling it off and getting the pitch you can finally handle. And it comes out about high thigh and he just laced it to center. Well you get him to start to swing because it's a high pitch and he's been swinging fastball but now he's on time. LSU with the lead and the dangerous Jared Mitchell is up. LeMayu scores the go ahead run. Boy he will. There's Mitchell. Runners at first and second two out. The one thing you won't do with Jared Mitchell is throw a fastball by him. This is going to be a very good fastball hitter at the big league level. What he's going to be working on is off speed pitches and breaking balls. Fastball hit high in the air. Lesson all over the place. All the way back to the wall, then comes roaring in to make the catch. Well that was an adventure but LSU gets one on a clutch hit by Mikey Mato. We'll go to the bottom of the 11th. It's a one run game. All right we go to the bottom of the 11th inning LSU has taken the lead seven to six. Huge base hit by Mikey Matuk, who earlier had an IV in the locker room because he cramped up. He made a saving catch in center field earlier and a base hit that could decide this ball game. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Mike, we'll have to see how Texas responds to another Augie Garrido motivational speech here in the dugout. The message. If you think we've lost, then we've lost. If you think we've won, then we have. Right now, it's all up to us. We have to think in our heads that we're going to win this thing and know that we do. If we do think that way, we will win it. Well, they don't always work. But saying the right thing is a huge thing for a coach, whether it works or not. If you inspire your kids, you've done your job. Inspiration and giving them something visual. You talk about, you know, visual stimulus of picturing yourself doing something well and you have a better chance of doing it well than if you view defeat and Augie knows he wants to see a positive outcome in their head and he has a better chance of watching them execute than seeing them fail. The Longhorns have nine hits in this game five of them solo home runs. They need another one here. Brandon Loy the shortstop you will see the seven eight and nine men in the order. And Matty Ott on for his third inning of relief. And that's about as far as they've stretched him out this year. He's done it twice before. Both times, scoreless inning in the third. Oh! Last Once ball called strike. We're in the bottom of the 11th. Once against Mississippi Valley State and the other time against South Carolina. Oh! Breaking pitch called strike two. Got him to chase. Brandon Loy is gone. One out in the bottom of the 11th.
Well, when you're slinging it from the side, this slider going away is tough on any right-handed hitter, and he just can't hold up. You're, you're trying to protect, but he's already painted you on the outer half of the fastball. Nice time to throw a slider and get a guy to chase. Now Tim Maitland, who took one on the knee to reach base. Back in the ninth. One and one. Strike two call. You see Ott is kind of the same type of pitcher as Lewis Coleman. He's kind of a side slinger, not a lot of loss. He attacks the strike zone and uses movement and aggressiveness to get you out. A ball and two strikes to Maitland. Struck him out. That ball tailed back over the inside corner. Two gone. Back to back strikeouts in the 11th. Well, a pitch to Greg Maddox perfected. A little comeback sinker on the inside part of the plate to a left hander. Used to seeing it away, it gets in there in the blind spot. They think it's going to be a ball, and it comes back. The old front door. The LSU chant at full throat. Swing and a miss by Connor Rowe, the last hope for the Longhorns. LSU was down to its last out. Now they're one out away from going ahead in the best of three. Laid off a breaking ball. Connor Rowe has a home run tonight. Had a walk off against Arizona State. Would he like another one right here to tie it? Fastball low. His power is a pitch up in the zone. Matty Ott has been down in the zone. 3-1. Torres would be next, the leadoff man. Texas keeps coming back. Swing and a miss, strike two, and Connor Rowe was trying to tie it up right there, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, you know, once you get that in your head, you get that feeling of that walk off. You, you know, all he's trying to do is duplicate. He's trying to get a pitch middle in, take a shot at it. Ott has fanned the last three. His nickname is Matty Ice. Just got a piece to stay alive. Just your average college World Series game. He's seen it all. Three and two to Connor Rowe. From Matty Ott. Whoa, what a break. Ball four up and in, couldn't get the bat out of the way. Those are things that win and lose games right there. That's ball four easily. On the ground to second base, Hanover. Throws him out and LSU wins. <laughs> Texas has got to be thinking, what do you do? What do you have to do to beat these guys? We had five solo home runs. We played really good defense. We got some clutch pitching when we needed it. And we lose it in 11 and Well, Paul Maneri said it earlier that the, if you're going to give up home runs, give up solo home runs. And, you know, obviously they find a way to fight back and, uh, you know, scratch one across.
Matty Ott gets the win in relief. His fourth to go with a school record 16 saves. That's got to be the sweetest one yet. Almanary one victory away from his first national championship. Skip Bertman five at LSU. Maneri one half of the way there for number one. He rebuilt the program coming from Notre Dame. This is without a doubt his best ball club. And most people think it's the best ball club in the country. He's trying to prove it here. And Paul Maneri, who is really a good guy, has a leg up. One game ahead. We'll be back tomorrow night. The final LSU 7, Texas 6, next on ESPN Sports Century. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, along with Oral Hershiser, Robin Ventura, Aaron Andrews, Kyle Peterson, and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick, so long from the College World Series finals. And thanks for watching. Now, here's SportsCenter.